You got videos like in the hundreds of millions of views. My Crazy. pregnancy transformation. Yes, yes, that was a video. Yeah. I'm like, what the fuck? You have a combined following of what, five, six million right now? Mm -hmm. How does it feel to influence that many people or be admired by that many people? I went in like guns blazing. I'm like, listen to me, you're the Oprah of your generation. You're going to be the biggest star in the world. He you don't brainwashed know you're... Yeah. I like, I, I was like, you're like Oprah, Ellen, that's, that's, the, that's who you are. What are some of the biggest deals? What do they look like? You don't necessarily have to say the brand if you can't, but numbers wise, I'm always curious. Seven, seven figure deals. That is the fucking best thing I've ever heard. Welcome back to the MBH podcast, Money Buys Happiness. Guys, thank you so much. We just hit 90K subscribers. We love you guys. Thank you for our day ones, man. You guys are showing us love. It's been so much love. The growth has been super like crazy. We just been like on a super like 90 degree at this point, no? Yep, yep. And so, shout out, shout out Ryan Farb. Yes, yes, the legend He's in the room. <laughs> this is his house. Yes. We love him. We're, we're probably gonna do a tour after, no? Give we might have to. house? Congrats, man! It's a beautiful <laughs> property. Um, so go find them. He, if you need any real estate, we're gonna we're gonna plug yeah. We'll you plug in his links in. We'll plug his <laughs> links in everything. But uh, but Ernesto, who do we got in the house today? We got Gary and Valeria Lipovetsky. Yes, welcome. What's up? Welcome. Thank you. Hi. You pronounce, <laughs> you pronounce our names properly. Of course, so really I'm good. good at pronouncing names. <laughs> it's though. a good start. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, a mentor and a client and a friend. Thank you. Thank you. A super influencer. Thank you. Thanks for coming. I want to get into how you guys met. That's the first thing. Mm -hmm. And before that, a little bit of context as to what phase you were both at in your life mm -hmm. when you met. So whoever wants to go first. Go ahead, babe. <laughs> the phase I was at when I met you. Yeah. I mean, I was very young. I didn't think about the phase I was at. I was 19 when we first met. With statements like that, this is why I get a lot of shit. <laughs> <laughs> Because I'm a lot older than you, so people, you know, there's that whole thing about our relationship where people are like, oh, should have thought about it when you were <laughs> this. That's a good point. Good point. Fair. She's holding me accountable. See, I'm I like it. I like Forever. it. Though. I like it. It's good. I see it already. Um, yeah, so I was 19 when we first met, mm. um, but nothing happened. I mean, I had a boyfriend at the time. I just moved to Canada from Israel, and uh, we met at a friend's um, house, and uh, then I moved to New York. Okay. Oh, okay. Broke up with a boyfriend. And came to visit, and I decided to throw a party. My mom opened this like restaurant, so I wanted to, you know, get people in. So I invited a bunch of people, and Gary was one of those people. She didn't even invite me directly; like yeah, she invited yeah. somebody who invited yeah. me. Nice, yeah. okay. Yeah. And uh, that's when we started chatting, and uh, he asked me if I had a boyfriend. I said no, and that's then he invited happened. me. No, I asked, "How's your boyfriend doing?" When I saw which you is that the night. same thing. <laughs> and you said, "Oh, we broke up." Yeah. So I was like, what's up? what's up? He was, what's up? You want to go see a show? And I was like, no. I mean, no, I didn't say no, but I was like, yeah, we should all go as a group to see the show. Okay. Yeah. So be so you got nice. friend zoned. You got okay. friend zoned right that away? Was, yeah, immediate friend zone. That was her like polite. I'm a really nice person, so I'm like, I'm not saying no. I'm just like. That was yeah, her yeah. polite way. So you were just friends first? Uh, yeah. I mean, I didn't really look at you at first as somebody. So what happened like was, on okay, let's hear, <laughs> okay, here we go. Oh, okay. yes, <laughs> so, I saw, so that night I asked, how's your boyfriend doing? Cause I remember from a year ago, she had a boyfriend Yeah. and she goes, oh, we're not together anymore. And what happened then was I didn't say anything to you that night, but I told our friend, Mary, our mutual friend who, who we met through Mary and who actually, she lives in Miami now too. We said to Mary, I, sorry, I said to Mary, um, Hey, well, like what's up with Valeria? And she goes, Oh, well, um, like she's single now, I heard. She goes, yeah, but Gary, she's 20 years old. Yeah. And I was 38. And I was like, oh, all right. Well, ask her ask her what she thinks. You know, <laughs> I was a coward, right? I go, yeah, ask, yeah. Her, ask her what she thinks of me. And then Mary just never got back to me. Okay. So that was like, she asked that was like the, Mary's polite. Like, did she ask you? Did she ask <laughs> she you? Yeah. Okay. And she said, I'm not interested. Okay. Um, right? You said, I'm not interested. Yeah, yeah, you were too old for me. Yeah, I understand. You're a big talker. We have three kids now, so okay. <laughs> but, um, Things change. So then I saw her again a couple of weeks later. And I, uh, I saw her, I was chatting with her, and she's like, yeah, I have no way to get home. I'm like, hey, let me give you a ride home. And she goes, and I said, yeah, yeah no problem. I'll, uh, I said, I'll give you a ride home. She goes, wait a second, don't you live downtown? I said, yeah. She goes, yo, but I, I'm, in, I'm staying in Richmond Hill with my mom. Opposite and we way. were like in the middle of the city. <laughs> yeah. It's the opposite way. 
And she goes, no, it's okay. Don't worry. It's out of your way. I go, no, actually, I, I, that's the way I take. I take the highway. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> nice. I take the 407 nice. across. Yeah, that 407, that's, that's where I go. So yeah. I'm already, it's on, it's, my, it's on my way. Yeah. So I took her and then it was just going to be me and her. And then her friends who had a couple of drinks, more than a couple, they heard that we were, I was driving her and they're like, hey, we're going up there too. You, you became the Uber. Us? So I, then exactly. I became an Uber. So first I was friend zoned. Then there I was go. the Uber driver. <laughs> you're, you're getting there though. You're you getting know, slowly like, working I don't up. know if I'm moving up or down. And what was happening in your mind at that time? Like what were you trying to do? I was just trying to like talk to her, get her number, yeah. hang out with her, you know, spend cool. some time with her. Cool. So, um, and and, and from, from a career perspective though, where are you at that point? Um, I was in the middle of closing like a big deal okay uh to sell a, to sell a company yeah. company that i own yeah yeah um so, so it was confident oh <laughs> he was pumped you know eh? that yeah. you know that's like energy i had yeah. swagger yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> i had swagger yeah so then you know i just we started bbming each other because i understood that like the way she let me down she let me down in such a polite way that mm. i thought what a what a good girl like she's such a nice girl and to be honest i thought to myself you know what she's a pretty girl she probably has maybe you know some older friends so I'm like, okay, I'm going to be networking because at that age, you have to be intentional about finding a wife. So I'm like, yeah. you know what? Cool. Like, she's a nice girl. She let me down easy. Um, she wasn't rude about it because a lot of young, pretty girls will have an attitude. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But she was, she, was, she was good. So I said, okay, cool. And we just started BBMing. Remember BBM? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, of course. Get the pain, get the we were talking about it the other day. It was yeah. so best. So I dropped all the bullshit. I dropped all the game, this and that. And we were just friends. Yeah, yeah. so okay. I was in New York and we were messaging a lot. Yeah, yeah. And I but like, like just friends, it. just yeah. like that's it. Yeah, yeah. How, how long was the friend stage? <laughs> and and what sparked the next stage? Um, Champagne. A few months. <laughs> yes, Tequila. alcohol. <laughs> Tequila, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> a few months we were friends. And then when I came back to Canada, we went out with a couple of friends. And then we ended up in like a lounge, right? So she, was, champagne. she was in town <laughs> from New York. Okay, and I she was staying at her mom's in Richmond Hill, up in the suburbs of Toronto, and she knew I lived in the city. And she's like, "Hey, you want to hang out?" She had, and it was a holiday weekend; nobody else was in town, so she needed yeah, someone to take her and her friend. Yeah. Her friend was so. her friend was in from Israel, her okay. childhood friend. So I grabbed the buddy, and the four of us went out again, just friends, whatever. And that night, we ended up uh, just the two of us. We went to a lounge. I ordered a bottle of champagne. We each had some champagne. And then we kissed. And then at that moment, then it should be my wife. That's it. Done. Damn. In my mind, it was, it was, it was done. <laughs> Set in stone, eh? <laughs> Did you know mind. that too yeah. at the, the same moment? No. I mean, I felt there was something. But I mean, I was 20 years old. I True. don't think I was yeah, thinking about... Yeah, that's tough to think like that. Yeah, yeah. I was just like, yeah, I'm, you know, in town for a little bit. I'm going back to New York. So yeah, this yeah. is when you were 20 and you were 38. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And, and, and uh, okay, you're, you're in New York, modeling. Yeah. What are you doing in New York Yeah, I was time? modeling. So when I moved to from Israel to Canada, um, I moved there to be with my mom and my brother. Okay. And the industry there is not great. So I decided sure. to move to New York, and I was doing that. Okay. And how I was that? It. Yeah, I how was that? New York. You were by yourself, though? Yeah. Yeah. But I was by myself my whole life. So you hate, you hated New York? I hated Why? New York. It just felt so lonely mm. you know but i was surrounded by so many people yeah but you feel lonely yeah so i really didn't like that feeling i also i feel like the the pace of it doesn't match my personality mm. um it's and i fast? tried yeah it's too fast it's like not intentional people are like yeah. wishy-washy yeah and very aggressive and um and I like aggressive, but like intentional aggressive, you know? Okay. So um, they're just mean to be mean in New York. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And people were just kind of like, oh, this is New York. I'm like, no, uh, yeah. this should not. Somebody needs to fix this. <laughs> yeah. So um, I was kind of over it. So when we met, it was kind of at a point where I knew I don't want to stay in New York. Mm. Um, but I really didn't. I didn't have a lot of thinking of future plans. I remember the story differently. <laughs> okay. You do? Yeah, I remember she loved it and she was like just she was already down the road. I romanticized it. Maybe the idea of New York the in idea your mind. Of New yeah. York. Like I remember I was on the plane and I was listening to like Alicia Keys and Jay-Z. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like I'm coming. I'm going to take over the city. Yeah. And I was there for a few months and I'm like, "Oh my god, the yeah. city's going to eat me alive." Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I was Kind of like motivated, but I also felt that it was not my place. Her modeling career was doing, like she was doing her thing. She was modeling. Um, this is after she'd been modeling for already six years all wow. over the world. In different, wow. She lived in different countries all over the world. 
So she's been uh, she's been in, like financially independent since she was 15. She started modeling and she bounced. She left Israel, mm -hmm. and then she was you know she was doing her thing. But uh, the way I remember it, she she came she left New York to be with me because okay. I I proposed to her and like I wasn't gonna move to New York, right? <laughs> so she came to Toronto. How, yeah. how long after? How, like how long were you dating before? Two months. Two months, eh? Also, you <laughs> knew, eh? You were fucking. <laughs> you're ready to go. Oh my God! You. Yes, because <laughs> play around. Oh, hey, intentional yeah. though. After ten days, after ten days, I said to her, I said, "You're gonna be. I'm not proposing yet." I said, "But you're gonna be my wife." Mm. Uh, but I'm not proposing yet, so don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, okay. And then what I would do is every couple of days I would check in with her, yeah, to make sure she's okay. I'm like, listen, you know where this is going. I just want to make sure you're okay, like you're alright. Yeah. So she goes, "Come meet my mother." And then I met her mom, and her mom's like, "What do you want?" And I said, look, I love her, but I want to marry her. And she goes, look, the choice is her. If she's if she's cool with it, then you guys can continue dating. And, and, and at choice. that point, how did you know that quickly that this is the person you wanted to be with? Did you did you have other relationships in the past? And, and well, yeah, I was 38 years old. Yeah. Well, I'm yeah. Just, no, I'm not. That's so much <laughs> so, right? Yeah, the experience. You knew already. Yeah, I had a lot yeah, of yeah. girlfriends. I had a lot of relationships, like long term, short term, whatever. You just know. You get to a point where you know. Yeah. yeah. You know, like you know, I do. I. We just did we just did a podcast on Valeria's podcast and we mm. were talking about soulmates and stuff. So I don't know that I necessarily believe in that, but when you have already as much experience as I had, especially as a man, you just know what you want. So yeah. I identified immediately that she was just for me, she was like the perfect person. So Yeah, it's, and, it's that and simple. You're also at a good point in your life, I guess, selling that selling that portion of the business, money's probably good. You're like, Okay. Yeah. Like I'm fucking I'm ready to go. I'm ready to take the next step here. Like, let's yeah. keep it moving. So you guys both are in Toronto now, right? That's you. You get her to Toronto. Yeah, mm -hmm. I moved living. back. Yeah. Okay. Did, were you on social media or anything like that at that point? We interrupt this podcast for a very important announcement. We gotta talk about our friends over at Manscaped. All right, because we know you boys, you gents, you're like us. You gotta keep it clean all the way around, from up top to down low. Do you understand? Speaking of down low, okay. The guys at Manscaped, they got this little product they call the Lawn Mower. But it's not for the grass, it's for your grass, the male grass that's down there, okay? You gotta keep it nice and clean. You know the beautiful thing about this product right here is? I know you guys have all shaved before. Little, ah, bro, little, pull a little hair out, get a little, ah, ah. Guess what? It doesn't happen here. Now guys, that's not gonna do everything. It's not magic, okay? After that, your balls are still gonna stink. But don't worry, we got the ball deodorant right here. Get a little massage going, papa. Pa. Massage it up, make sure it's good. Smelling fresh. Do you understand? We need that. Keep your balls clean. Yup. Keep your balls fresh. Yeah. Because you never know when you're gonna have to drop your pants. And if you need some extra tone, you know, sometimes you gotta match the tone. Yeah. We got the ball toner. Do you understand? Sometimes my balls, they're not on the right tone. Clean it up and keep it fresh with us, okay? MBH, promo code MBH for 20% off any order and free international shipping. You gotta love the team at Manscaped for hooking us up and they wanna hook you up too. Let's get back to this episode. No, I was doing modeling and I knew that I wanted to move away from it. I didn't know what I wanted to do. You didn't like it anymore? No, I felt like I, I felt like I'm, it's gonna come a time very soon where I'm like overstaying, you know? Like mm -hmm. modeling is such a short, kind of career path okay. and I was doing great. I was making money, but I was by no means like at a level of like supermodel. So okay. for me, I'm like, okay, I'm not going there Yeah. and I can continue making this money, but it's gonna, you know, yeah. it's gonna run dry at some point. So, so how does that start? How does the social media side of, of your business start? Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, everything happened pretty fast with us. I moved back in Tor to Toronto. We got a place together. Cool. We lived together. We were engaged. We lived together for a year before we okay. got married. Once we got married, we went to our honeymoon two days after the wedding. I got pregnant. I like, I didn't have time to just. <laughs> oh, wow. Like, everything. <laughs> boom, 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 what boom, is happening here? <laughs> on the honeymoon. Yeah. Yeah. It okay. was. Yeah. <laughs> on, <laughs> on the honeymoon. Listen, I can see you oh thinking God. back. Listen, listen. He's so <laughs> proud of himself. I am, I am proud of myself. Are you kidding me? Like three in a row. Boys. Boom, boom, boom. Three boys. Yeah, I'm proud of myself. Babe, yeah. fertile grounds over here. Okay? Yeah. Like. I understand. It's the it team. Takes, it it takes two, you know? It takes two to tango. It's the team. It's the team. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, and so by yeah. the way, your wedding, the, the video that you oh posted about the wedding oh, when you guys dude. are singing. Baby, if you give it to me, I give it to you. As long as you want, you know I got it. Baby, if you give it to me, give it to you. Know what you want, you know I got it. 
amazing, that's the best thing I've ever amazing, seen, by the way. Dude, I'll do that shit a cappella. You know, I was I was watching that thing for days, bro. I was just laughing. I was like, this is amazing. I just want to mention that we need to give credit to my mom because she made us do it. That's amazing. Come on, my really? Mom, I actually yes. thought it was it was your idea, you know? Absolutely not. Because <laughs> no, like, you were like, in the song, like, you, you performed you the song. Because if, I, get on stage. if I'm doing it, I'm doing it. You know, yeah. like we're gonna pull it. it up. We gotta pull that video up. Um, okay, so anyways, going back yeah, to it. Yeah, it was uh, it was very special. So yeah, so everything okay. went really quickly with us. Um, I was pregnant. We had Jake. At that point, I wasn't really. I couldn't figure out what it is that I wanted to do, and I wasn't really focused on that. I mean, I had the luxury to not think about it, not be stressed about it. Um, so Gary was doing the working, and I was doing the raising the child. Mm. And then we got pregnant you again. Make, sorry, you make it sound like I had what? nothing to do with this kid. <laughs> we were both raising I the mean, child. I <laughs> mean... Yeah, but, yeah but, you, but you were providing. You were doing so, more of the providing. No, nah, whatever. Like, that's, that's <laughs> not... The, look, with her in the beginning, she was grossly disappointed and underwhelmed. I really was. By my performance as a father. That's correct. Because uh. in, for me, and I don't want to be, like, controversial, but as a man, I don't have a lot to contribute where the kid's, like, shitting his pants the whole time. So to me, it's like, what, what, I don't know, like, what do you want me to do? I don't know. Like, yeah, you shit his pants. Go okay. change a diaper. I don't know. Let's, you have a nanny. You, I don't know. Tell the nanny to do yeah, it. Right? Yeah. Well, well like, I want to go. Okay. Based on this conversation, I want to go back a bit. And, and when you guys got married, what yeah. kind of conversation did you both have as to like what your roles were going to be? Expectations, non-negotiable, stuff like that. So when I proposed to Valeria, it didn't even cross my mind what she would do for a living. I don't know. I didn't, I never even thought about well, it. Well, you just thought you were going to provide, essentially. Like, Well, yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, he's yeah, very yeah. old school, so I feel like it was a pretty, like, traditional, you know, understanding yeah. of what's okay. going on. Um, were you okay with that? Like, was that something that you thought would you'd be good to do? I knew that I'm going to be doing something. Uh -huh. I just didn't want to rush into it just to feel like, Look at me, girl yeah, yeah. boss. Yeah, you know yeah. I had mean? no clue what she was going to do. But it didn't, it didn't occur to me. The yeah. only thing at one point she told me, like, maybe I want to do something. So I suggested just being practical. I, I said, wanted to do so many things. Remember when I showed you my sketches for design? <laughs> yeah, I remember I was that. doing, like, so many and, random And I just things. said, yeah, do it. I said, do it. Do it all. Whatever <laughs> do you everything do, you want. You, yeah. you yeah. know, you have the freedom. Do whatever you want to do. Yeah. Like, whatever. But in reality, I was also 21. I had a newborn. I was like, what the hell is my life? How am I raising this thing? I, I don't even know who I am. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I just can't count on me because I'm not changing diapers. <laughs> I couldn't count on it. So I, I was very disappointed because I think in my tell head. Him, tell him, Tell him. In my head, I thought that this is like a partnership, okay. right? And in a partnership, you're like, oh, it's going to be 50-50. To give Gary credit, he did sit me down. He's like, listen, this is not my thing. I really, mm. I'm, I'm focused on the company. I'm focused on building this thing. I'm going to work. There was a lot of changes going on for him professionally. He's like, I, you need help. Like, let's hire a nanny. Obviously, I don't want you to suffer, but... You can't count on me. I can't really do anything here. Mm. Um, so, but sorry, but to add to that, I yeah. said to her, my role will be more yes. clear and evident to you Correct. when th when the kids are older. Right. Yeah. She's True. like, please be patient with me. I'm like, yeah, I'm just like you got to chill, sense. relax. Yeah, I'm yeah. not going to change diapers. I'm not going to do. And I, I've been criticized for that, but it is what it is. But I will. You'll see my contribution later on. You're really against diapers, eh? I just don't like. <laughs> no, don't even. You don't, don't even like, understand. I, don't, I thought. I, don't like I thought I don't because do men I. has this thing, and correct me if I'm wrong, yeah, but yeah. I swear that I like cracked down the code here. Okay. So men has so this thing where they do things really, really badly just so the woman do can be like, "Okay, just go away. I'll do it myself." You have there's there's a lot there's, of truth to that. I'm gonna say that's probably eighty percent true. Okay, eighty percent. I'm, I'm not trying to throw you. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. I do it too. I do it too. So that's why. Right. I, I well, it's like, okay, like, yeah, okay, Gary, go cook dinner tonight, and then you make a shit dinner, and then right. you're not going to ask him to cook dinner I again. Would just Correct. Get Uber. <laughs> there yeah. you go. But, but, but at the same time, so I, I see where he's coming from. It is, I think it is, I mean, I also can't speak for every man on the planet, but I probably want to stay away from diapers too. I'm going to be honest. Facts. So I did this experiment <laughs> okay. one time where I was like, he's just doing this thing where he does it really badly, <laughs> and then I'm just, I have to do it, or the nanny has to do it, and it's all an act. So one time I sent him to change a diaper and he did change a few diapers. Like it wasn't like he's like, oh, I'm not touching poop. <laughs> he did it. But he goes into the room and I had a baby camera on and he didn't know. And I was oh, like, shit. yes. So I was like, I'm, I'm going to watch that. him because I know he's going to excel at this and I'm going to show proof. Took him <laughs> fucking 40 minutes. 
But during this 40 minutes, he's like, <laughs> everything is done super slow-mo. Yeah. And he's like, bleh. <laughs> bleh. Like he had so many gagging moments that I, when I looked at the footage, I was like, yeah, he's just he really, yeah. Yeah. he just really can't do it. I don't like shit. Yeah. <laughs> I he doesn't I can't like blame shit. He doesn't like going to supermarkets. Oh, he's the like worst. all the most yeah. convenient stuff. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, I'll yeah. have you know that the three times I did change like each child's diaper. Yeah. Um, like now our eldest is 10 years old and I remind yeah. him when he when he's when he's misbehaving I'm like just so you rem just so you know that one time you were shitting yourself and I, it was me I cleaned it up yeah <laughs> so I, I remind him like don't, don't, don't yeah like don't mess around in here because I clean clean, I literally cleaned your shit yeah <laughs> and when I'm gonna be really old you're gonna clean yeah, mine it's a good way to put yeah. it though it's, it's a good yeah, way no, to no. teach a lesson so, Bro, so in your mind me. Yeah. yeah. So in your mind, you're just thinking, okay, when these kids are a bit older, I mean, just from the first child, you're mm -hmm. already thinking, okay, when he's a bit older. Yeah. Yeah. And he told me, he's like, listen, I'm going to step in when I truly feel like I can add value. Mm. And I, um, I was very patient. I was like, okay, it kind of makes sense. Yeah. I don't really know, but fine. Let's see. You had no choice. You were booked already. Like, that's it. <laughs> oh, but, but I clear, had choice. Stop, stop, stop. I always have stop, choice. Stop, stop, stop. <laughs> no. But look, but to be, to be fair, it's like just... I didn't change diapers, but I still like played with him and like he didn't like I wasn't absent. Like I played but with I him. But I was there. I was. You know, I was, was kind of like I had different expectations. I well, just it was your first gonna child be, like, too. 50, 50, okay, you know? so from the first child, then going to the second. Yeah. What did you but learn? To answer your question about yeah. the non-negotiable that we talked about. Yes. Before we got married, we actually something that's really great with Gary and I, and I feel like it contributes to our relationship is the fact that we communicate very openly about everything. It's needed. Mm. And when we sat down and kind of, we always talked about what's going to happen. Obviously, the big age gap, he wanted to make sure that he's like, listen, this is what we're getting into and shared his experience. And one of the things that stuck with me, he told me before we got married, he's like, all of this right now is super exciting. We're like in love. It's the honeymoon stage. All yeah. of it is amazing. But there's going to be there's going to be Wednesdays. Yeah. And mm. I was like, what do you mean? It's like Wednesdays, you know, it's a hum good. day. And <laughs> that's going to happen more than those exciting days. But I just need you to remember that, like, that's the ones that would really, I guess, make us or break us. And yep. that's what we need to work through. And that's what's going to, you know, build our foundation. And I think when I went into marriage with this kind of understanding and analogy, everything felt just better like yeah. I, well, you knew more what to expect as well i knew what to expect and i think for me that's why i kind of always knew that i will marry someone older because and i see it with a lot of my friends that are married to someone their ages or a bit older because men develop just a bit slower uh is that she they just, kind of she just no it was just a little stab yeah, yeah, no, a little no, stab no. the whole no. room goes silent <laughs> no, oh like, my what? god i'm gonna come out and be like no, no but no, you know like, right. of course of course true. there's some kind true. of uh you know there's a little bit of a gap yeah. and i knew that i wanted to be with someone that can kind of already have an understanding of what's going on what's going to happen how it's going to go um and help me through this rather yeah. than being with someone where we both trying to figure it out we both don't know kind of ourselves and I feel like there's a lot of, I don't know, there's a lot of like room for failure there. So sure. I think for me, I really appreciated his guidance throughout the years and just the knowledge and, you know. Yeah, and, would, would you say he kind of helped like guide you through life or, or maybe even a better word is lead? Then, yeah. I think that it's funny because we posted this MC from our uh, and so we call micro content. Micro when we content. Make real Sorry, stuff. Yes. a short yeah. video for our conversation. And what Gary, I think, mentioned that he kind of like takes credit for some of my success. And it was so interesting to see how some people were like, "I can't believe he said that." Mm -hmm. yeah. But to me, I mean, when you're in a partnership, when you're in a marriage, I mean, I'm not self-made. You're not self-made. None of us are self-made. We're made by the people that are beside us that we choose to surround ourselves with. And I truly feel like I can now reach my full potential because I have him by my side. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I would have been in this position if there was a different man by my side. And, and sorry, True. to blur it to your credit, um, when things like when I was guiding you and leading you, yes, I was much older than you. I was much more experienced. But you pushed back in exactly the correct amount, meaning you didn't let 
yourself just become a product of my teachings. Yes. Yeah. You, 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 you kept pushing back, and you still do. You, you <laughs> literally did it this morning. And, you know, you continue to push back so that your kind of, you know, your development has been a collaborative effort 100%. between the both of us. So I'm, she, she is yeah. very much who she is, somewhat because of me, yeah. because I'm much older and I was there. But it's 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 her. Believe me. Well, because like, you, you kind of got be it out person. personally. I'm very, exactly. I'm very self aware, and I was yeah. I was always very self aware, and I know when to push, and I know when to like sit back, and yeah. I think also, you know, watching my mom and her relationship through other years, I had a very clear understanding of what I want beside me, and like the person I wanted to be bes to have beside me. So, I guess for me, like that's where the magic happened, um, and. To kind of continue on to how I got into social media, um, it was exactly that. I had my fir my first child. I was at home, kind of trying to figure out how to deal with adult life. We had yeah. Ben already. We then had we had kids. Ben. Yeah. Then we had Ben because there's like 17 months apart. Okay. And <clears> I decided that um, I want to start looking into something like interests of mine. So I actually went and I did my holistic nutrition diploma because nice. I was really interested. Um, on wellness and nutrition. Yeah. Uh, so I did that. And I had this idea where, you know what, I'm going to open a small little office in Toronto. I'm going to see clients. Like, that's going to be my thing. And when I started doing it, I really hated it. I hated huh. the one-on-one -on -one with people. Um, and I had this thing now. I had this knowledge. And that's when I started looking into social media. So that was, I think, 2017. Uh, I remember before you started social media, and I think this, this was very much a turning point in terms of your confidence because you weren't the, like you weren't like super confident which is surprising because you're beautiful and you were a model for so many years <coughs> but those are the most non-confident people yeah that's true so the turning true. point was one time so valeria had just started putting some stuff out on social media but not not at any professional level it was just her like personal account that happened to be made public yeah and one day she comes home and she said this woman reached out to me this like woman from like Forest Hills or something, this older woman. And she asked me it, how much it would cost to come to her house and teach her and her friends how to put on makeup. Wow. Oh, remember that? And like how did the, they know like how did they know they that? They just saw her on her Instagram. Oh, okay, they okay. just saw a pretty a pretty girl, whatever. So let me let me let me yeah. let me tell a story. So then Larry said, Well, I, I don't know, I don't like I don't know anything about makeup and stuff. I said, I don't know, you're you're a woman and you're pretty, like who puts on your makeup? She goes, well, I do. I go, just show them how you put on your makeup. Yeah. And she goes, well, she's asking how much. I said, I don't know, tell her two grand. Yeah. She goes, she goes are you crazy? You're scared said, to, were you scared to say two Gs? Like, of course. Yeah. And hold on, like you're following at that point on Instagram. No, I had I had maybe couple, like, like, I don't know, 2,000, 3,000 okay, people, okay, right? Okay. It was very like community, okay. yeah. friends of friends, things like that. Yeah. So you so come in 2,000. I go tell her 2,000. Yeah, it's like tell her 2,000. I was like, go. what are you talking about? This is embarrassing. I have i don't have any knowledge to share with them. Anyways. Sure you do. You're, you're but a, a, lot of, a lot of your early videos were like cook, like cooking. There was like some. Yes. Okay. So that was just a random thing. But for me, there were these signals and confirmation throughout my journey of like, you're on the right path. You're on the right path. Yo, like, she got the two Gs though. Oh, did you get it? Yeah. I did. Oh, that's okay. amazing. Yeah. All right. That's amazing. Show. Let's yeah. Yeah. Include and that let, part. And let sure. me tell you, that was a very long, like, three <laughs> hours of me showing three products. And I'm like, and then you opened it. <laughs> that was like your first time, like, teaching someone yeah, how to do Yeah, I was like, it. are they going to call me out right now? Because yeah. I have no idea. But I feel she's dismissing this opportunity because this, this situation, a few things happened. Yeah. Number one, she um, confirmed to herself that she can ask for... A significant amount of money for her time and then she gets it yeah. yeah and then she went down there not having confidence in her ability to do what she's being asked to do and what she's being paid to do yeah but she still nailed it yeah and at that point you weren't really posting to try and monetize no not at like all you weren't really trying but to that captured my kind of you know yeah. my attention because i said okay there's something here so then i looked at this knowledge that i got from my diploma my nutrition and i said i need to now translate it into social media because I'm not going to see one-on-one. -on -one. I don't care to get paid for it. Let me just put it out there and see what's up. So 2017, I started my blog, themodernfox.com. <laughs> Themodernfox.com? <laughs> uh, no, it's no. not. We actually <laughs> shut it down this year. But okay. like for the longest time, like nobody touches this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, I started there and I was posting a lot of like wellness, nutrition, beauty things. 
And after about six months or so of doing it, now 2017 for a blog was late. Yeah, like, yes. blog I was, was say, like 2010. Late. Yeah, right? 12, 10, yeah. Right. So I figured out that this is not the way to do it, um, and it wasn't very challenging for me. And that's when I discovered YouTube in terms of like as a creator. Because okay. uh, before I thought YouTube was literally just like to watch cat videos and like music videos. <laughs> yes, yes. Yes. So when I started looking into the platform and seeing all these creators, my mind was blown. Mm. And for me, it signaled like, okay, this is the next step. I'm moving from the blog, I'm moving to video, and I'm just gonna figure it out. So while he was working, making the money <laughs> i was trying to figure out that's the work he's making money, money while making that money he's going to work it's like hey Valeria, where are you going today <laughs> exactly. so um i was just kind of playing around trying to figure out how to you know crack down on that and um and that's it it was at what point does it become like <laughs> oh okay this is real now like how quickly do you start growing because 2017 2018 I don't want to say that's even late on it's YouTube. It's not early. It's not but early. It's not early it wasn't early. Yeah. Yeah. No. Even 2017, 2018 for for YouTube is not early by any means. It wasn't it's not early late, at all. But it's not early. But ignorance was bliss for me because I wasn't aware of what's out there. Like I yeah. didn't even know how to find creators. Mm. Um, you know, it was very different. So I was just like, okay, how am I creating content and providing that value with the knowledge that I have? And um, and we'll see. I, again, didn't really have any big plans for it because I didn't even know you can make it into a business. True. I thought I'm just like messing around, whatever. And for me, it was also kind of a, a self-development project in a way because I was hiding behind blogging because mm -hmm. you can constantly edit True. it. You just post like words. Uh, but for me, I was... I was very insecure in terms of like my accent and the way I speak and my grammar. So, you know, coming from modeling, I feel comfortable in front of the camera, but I don't feel comfortable being me in front of the camera. Yeah, true. Okay. So I looked at it as like, okay, this is an opportunity to step out of my comfort zone. Yeah. Um, and so it's still at that point, not, it's not a business at all still. Not at all. It was just literally just. And, and what was the growth fun. like? How quickly do you start growing? Is it instant? Is it slow? It wasn't quick at all. I mean, it took me a long time to figure out how to edit, to upload, SEO, like oh, so all the So you're doing all that yourself? Stuff. Yeah. Oh, cool, I did okay. it all. I figured it out and I was doing it and everything took so long. Um, and then I started also paying attention to like Instagram mm. uh, and posting there a little bit. And um, and I think I got my first sponsor. It was like a probiotic brand. Okay. It was like two hundred dollars, and I'm like, "Oh, this is so cute!" Yeah. Like, I, I had I didn't know any of this. Yeah, but you would so have said two thousand. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I, I, didn't yeah. Know, I, I didn't know about it. Okay, I didn't know this was going on. I wow. didn't know there's value to this media, yes. right? Okay. So I'm yes. like, they don't want to pay me. I'm just happy to get free probiotics. Probiotics are expensive. Yeah. So <laughs> I was just uh, I was just started doing videos and figuring out, you know, who I am. The growth was not. It was like didn't skyrocket yeah. at all. It took okay. me time. I wasn't consistent at first, then I got consistent. Yeah. And um, and I think the big kind of event that happened was when I got my first like big campaign. Okay. okay. Now, through all of that, I didn't really share with Gary what I was doing. He was... Yep. Yeah, he was doing I was it, just yeah. annoyed because <laughs> we, whenever we go out, she'd be like, can you take a picture of me? You gotta take yeah. a picture of me. I and you didn't get me. why it was why. I was like, oh, well, just, can we just eat? I want to go for dinner. Leave me alone. <laughs> no, no, you gotta take a picture of me. First, take it like this. Take it like that. You yeah, but now you're walking right. in here with the gimbal now. Yeah, now See, look at different time. times. <laughs> different yeah. times. Yeah. Yeah. Time. Yeah. Time. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Um, so I got my big campaign. I think it was like ten thousand wow. dollars. Nice. Who, who was it? If you don't mind me asking. I don't even remember. Do you <laughs> nice. believe me? I remember the probiotics. Was, yeah. was, was, was it like, like a thousand campaigns ago, bro? <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, yeah, fair. Probably more than a thousand. It was something to, I think it was a beauty brand. Okay. Okay. And I got my first like kind of big campaign and I was super excited. But again, I was so immersed in the creating aspect of it that yeah. I was like, okay, they're paying me cool. Yeah. But I'm like excited about the creation of it. And then Gary came home and he's like, hey, so I asked everybody from our bankers to like everyone that has any access to our accounts, but no one knows what this is. Do you know where this $10,000 came from? And I was like, yeah, <laughs> it's from YouTube. And he's like, 
what do you mean YouTube? What are you doing on YouTube? I didn't even know that she knew where we banked. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, how do you even know what bank we're at? <laughs> I didn't even know that she knew. Oh, but she apparently knew. she told me after. She goes, I know, I knew everything. I know everything. Yeah. Of course. So now you're explaining to him what's happening. Right. Yeah. So <laughs> I was, I was very, you know, I was very excited about it. And I told him, yeah, this is what I'm doing. I showed it to him. And him coming from his background with like internet marketing, he looked at it. He's like, this is like real media. This is the future. It was, I think, 2018 at that point. And I was like, are you sure? Because I'm just like messing around at home. It's 10 Gs is no, it's not messing around. But again, you know, for me, it was like, oh, it's like, whatever. It was a one-time thing. It's not actually anything. Yeah. And um, he really identified this opportunity. Mm. And he's like, looked at my videos. He said, first of all, you're really talented. I was like, oh, really? Said, yeah. <laughs> and then he started asking me a lot of questions. He's like, who's doing this? Who's editing? Who's taking the pictures? I'm like, I do everything myself. And um, I think that's when he started kind of paying more attention of what's going on. I basically said to her, I said, break down your day. Tell me, tell me what your day looks like. She yeah. says, I spend an hour a day. Yeah, but I also want to mention that it was such an interesting timing because he was growing this business that he couldn't really figure out if he wants to be part of. And then when he recognized this opportunity with my media, I think that it was just a very interesting timing in our life right so i'll get back to that story about where's your where's your time but what had happened was around the time she started doing this i had a business that i was in kind of like a loose partnership um with facebook with their instant article team okay and we had about a thousand facebook pages that we were in partnership with and we were uh, i think i told you about this you business. did you did and we were uh they were publishing our our articles we were writing like 30 articles a day okay and we were doing we were doing well we were yeah. doing like Good seven figures a month, you know. Yeah, yeah. crazy. And uh, then Zuckerberg got um, <clears throat> he got called up to Capitol uh, to to Capitol Hill or whatever. Yeah, there yeah, was yeah. the Cambridge Analytica scandal. The Facebook called us up. They said, "Hey, you know, like we need to talk. Come come to our office." So we went from Toronto to New York. And we're like, "What's up?" They're like, "You got to stop." Like, what do you mean we got to stop? They're like twenty percent of our traffic goes. Like twenty percent of Facebook is on your <laughs> domain. Yeah, um, we can't have the Zuck just got back. Like, sorry. I'm like, what do you mean sorry? They're like, no, we just can't can't. Sorry. So that was that, and it was right around the time like Valeria started doing this. And the interesting thing about it is that when that happened, and Valeria was able to show me her uh, her YouTube, and I logged into her YouTube and I saw the data and whatnot, I'm like, okay, like the pivot. So first of all, we have to get this going, mm -hmm. and I'll get back to that whole what does your day look like. But then I said, you know what, we gotta instead of making content in the written word like we were doing for that that you know, that company with Facebook that I had. I said, we gotta start doing video. So we started a YouTube channel and based on the data that I saw from her channel in terms of like click through rates, uh, retention numbers, like all of the data that I could get, we started another channel with another completely separate group of people and that channel now has four and a half million followers, mm -hmm. right? So b like Valeria did a lot. I mean, based on her data at that time, I was able to you know extrapolate that and then create media because different, yeah. what I saw with her was like, okay, like. She's one person, so she could only create a certain amount of content. Nice. So then we got a team of people together, and we were just belting out content like three ninety left right center. Day, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So it took that cap off because I didn't have a human being. I made like one of those. Fa it's like a. It's just like, besties, it's right? Like, it's besties. besties yeah. Yeah. It's like, so it's animation and scripts. And yeah, it's voiceover. educational. Yeah, we've been looking at it. We've been looking at it. So we did that. But getting back to getting back to Valeria, when I saw this ten thousand dollars, and I mean the ten thousand dollars was to me was a proof of concept. It was a proof that. There are brands, there are people willing to pay for this media. Yes. And, you know, I looked into the media, I saw it. And, you know, again, I had just come off of analyzing all that data on written content that I was doing with, you know, with that Facebook-based uh, business. And I was just like, you know, tell me about your day. And she said, look, I spend an hour a day filming. I'm in front of the camera an hour a day. I set up a tripod. I have a, a you know, my camera on me. I said, what do you do the rest of the time? Like the other, she, and then she goes, I spend nine hours a day editing video. I said, oh. how do you know how to edit video? Nine she hours says, a day? Yeah. I was really bad. Yeah. Like, I was so bad. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. You it know, takes, and I no, said, it takes I time, said, I, Not just editing video, but putting up photos, yeah, writing yeah. captions, yeah. just like everything else. And I'm like, but you spend nine hours a day editing video? She's like, yeah. And I'm like, how'd you learn? She goes, I looked it up on YouTube. I searched, how do you edit video? So she downloaded some free photo, video editing yeah. software. Okay. And then I said, okay, listen, we're going to hire a videographer, like a video editor. 
and that person's going to work eight hours a day, and I want you to work not 10 hours a day. I want you to work eight hours a day and just make content for eight hours yes. a day. Stay in front of the camera for eight hours yeah. a day. Yeah. So we basically like 8 x the volume of content, and through that increased volume of content on all platforms, that's when we started seeing the growth, right? Yeah. Before all of these suggestions, he came to me and he's like, can I yes. partner up with you yeah. on cool. this venture? Okay. And I, was like, I like that. It's a good Let way. Let me think about it. <laughs> <laughs> and then... No, um, first you said it's not a business. First you said it's not a business. Okay. Yeah, it's true. First, and, I, you, and you knew from your experience that it could be a business. So he, I felt uh, it But was. that's why it was such an interesting timing because he, because he worked with celebrities, he understood the value of a personal brand, yes. right? Which back then, I mean, the word didn't even really yeah, exist, exist yet, right? No. The term wasn't as popular. So he understood the value of that. And then he understood the value of media and all these things. So for me, I didn't have that knowledge. I was just like, I'm messing around. My kids are in daycare. I can like, <coughs> you know, have time to create this. Um, and then when he, when we started talking about it, he said, can I join in to this venture? Once he gave me a bit of an, you know, his insight into why this can be a business, I said, okay, let's do it. And that's when I'm, we started. Sorry, I'm laughing because, I mean, you're you're very polite in the way you describe it. I went in, like, guns blazing. I'm like, listen to me. You're the Oprah of your generation. You're going to be the biggest star in the world. He you don't brainwashed understand. Yeah. I, like, I, I was like, you're like Oprah. Ellen, that's that's the, that's who you are. People but that's don't why know. it was a joint, it, it was a joint thing. And it's like, it's interesting how, like, I give you so much credit. Because, again, like I mentioned earlier, I don't know if I would have had it in me to discover all these you know, strengths and like talents that I have this fast, yeah. right? When you have a person beside you being like, you're the Oprah of this yeah, generation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it took me dope, three years dope, to no, start listening you need. to him. But then I was like, wait, maybe I am. Well, because outside of the business, like when you have someone next to you, that's like consistently, you're the best. Yeah. Eventually you start to believe it. Yeah. When you start to believe it, then you start to act on it. Yeah. Then you probably saw it more in your content. You're more confident in the content. Mm -hmm. It's coming out better. People are receiving it better. So I think, yeah, even outside of the business stuff, like just to have somebody next to you to be like, you're the fucking next Oprah. You're like, yeah. holy shit. Every day you're like, whoa, you maybe I am. can you imagine, like, I don't think you guys are not married, right? No. no. Like, do you understand how important it is? to choose the right partner yeah, very true, outside yeah. of what we see, like how it's done on like movies and TV shows where you're like infatuated with someone and you're like, okay, I, I love you. Mm -hmm. There are so many layers yeah. Yeah. into that goes into like a successful partnership and like success for yourself. Right. Yeah. When you're with the wrong person, it's just, even if you're the most ambitious person in the world, yeah. Uh, you might not be successful, yeah. right? So Very it's true. like this partnership is extremely important. So back Hold to... Hold on, I just want to say one thing. Yeah. Um, when I told her she was like the Oprah of her generation, um, <laughs> no, I, I, I truly believed it. The it's thing a legendary is, thing to say. It's such a good compliment. No, like, but listen, if I didn't think it was true, I wouldn't have said it. Yeah. I, actually, I actually went with my instinct on, as to what I believed she could become. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If I didn't believe it, and if I if I looked at the content and I thought it was shit, mm -hmm. I wouldn't have done it. I would. I wouldn't. I. I Will you be like, oh, honey, this is so nice. Continue <laughs> doing. Look, this. the big this prove out, to be honest, was the money. The fact that somebody else saw in you, like, something that they wanted to put you know, $10,000 behind. Mm -hmm. To me, that was the first proof of concept financially. Well, the market, the, the, the market it, said the you're market, worth $10,000. All right. The market never lies. Yeah, yep. exactly. And so at that point, that to me was the first proof of concept. But then just knowing the person she is and knowing how talented she is and at, every, at everything she's, you know what she's like? She's like one of these savants. You know these savants? <laughs> yeah. These like, like Beethoven or what's his name? Mozart. Mozart you know yeah. Mozart? Yeah. He, the guy just could you know sit Mozart? down. <laughs> I heard of him could, before. The guy could just sit down and like play. He didn't yeah. need to read anything. He just knew it. He just, and that's, Valeria's like that with everything. Valeria's mm. the type of person like, she's just good at everything she tries. Like she looks at something, she takes two minutes and she just does it and that's it. Justin Bieber's the same way. I have a buddy who's friends with Justin or who spent some time with Justin Bieber mm -hmm. and he said, Justin Bieber, he played pool with Justin Bieber for the first time and he grabbed the cue and he didn't even know what to do with it and he started playing and he just like, that's Unreal. it, he just sink yeah. everyone. He's just, there are people, there are certain people, they're just savants. They're just yeah. good at everything instantly yeah. and Valeria is one of those people. So mm -hmm. I identified that. But if I didn't think she was as talented as she is, I wouldn't have pushed her to do this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so and and even going into, going into the business partnership, did you have any worries oh about that? Because you guys are husband and wife. And it now was a shit show. You're in business together. <laughs> it and was now a shit show. I didn't it was see a shit show for me. Okay, oh, so, great. so like, what was that like for, for you guys, like getting into what? business I, together? I, no I longer mean, just... Again, I didn't know 
what it's going to be like. Yeah. So I was just like, yeah, cool. The foundation is there. This person, I mean, he's my husband. He wants the best for me. We both want to succeed. We know, you know, both want the same stuff. So I felt very confident in having him as my business partner. But when we started working together, that was that was a lot for which, me. Which part? Because <laughs> I thought it was pretty good. Um, I was very frustrated with you. So now I this turns into couples therapy, guys. <laughs> <laughs> no, Happy to be here. <laughs> What's that? Happy to be here. Yeah. <laughs> Gary is a visionary. So Gary can see things. So he, when I even identify being like, this is the future of media, yeah. was for me, I was like, you're crazy. So being a visionary and then for me, someone who is insecure and, you know, young and I also was you know being young i let ego kind of you know make certain decisions True. so it was a lot of like you don't know what you're talking about and he's like no i do i'm like no you don't you know yeah. so it was a lot of that yeah but um because we were working i mean it was just in the my, beginning you, we worked me and like uh, the videographer and the, yeah in the beginning we worked a lot closer together now we don't because we have a lot more people yeah so there's a lot of like different kind of layers in terms of um responsibility yeah mm -hmm. yeah so in the beginning it was just another layer of communication we never tried before so we had to learn how to yeah, you gotta work through that, that. and I then enjoyed. also be husband and wife i enjoyed it i, yeah. I enjoyed yeah. it and i still enjoy it because <laughs> to me when you're in a relationship you often especially when you're in we've been together for 12 years now and when you're in a relationship for so long you run out of shit to talk about yeah. so Having having Fair. something Fair. as dynamic as a business where everything's fresh and where new. it's like you guys know, right? Yeah. Like it's yeah. every day there's something new. Yeah. Yes. And being able to problem solve together, it's like going to the gym. You know what I mean? Like you yeah. gotta keep you gotta keep going. You gotta yeah. keep going and putting in effort and you get results out of it. Yeah. So I actually think, and I'll disagree with Valeria, maybe in the beginning for her it was difficult because she was a lot younger, but for me, I understood the value of having a business with my wife, whereas mm -hmm. a lot of other people, a lot of my buddies looked at me and said, you're insane. Yeah. You're, you're, this isn't going to end well for you. You better not do this, especially you're putting her in the public eye. You're like, you know, this is not good. And I said, no, like, I, I know what I'm doing. I mean, it's a ballsy move. But like you said, if you saw, I mean, because you got to speak, you got to speak to general. Like, I think generally a lot of couples would not be able to do what you guys have done. I mean, there's proof. There's just not many people in your situation. It's just mm -hmm. the, the stats don't yeah. lie. Yeah. But if you said, like, like you said, you saw what you saw. So you have all these external factors saying, yo, maybe don't do this, don't do this, you're crazy. But if you knew in your heart, yo, this was the right fucking thing to do. Well, I can tell you the secret to how to do it. Yeah. It's really simple. <laughs> yeah, give it to me. You just got to drop your ego. Yes. No, That's it. 100%. Yeah. You got to drop your ego. 100%. Because when 26-year-old when Valeria... Is telling me what to do and like you know telling me i don't know what i'm talking about <laughs> and this and that and not just her by the way like our our, our team is mostly made up of of women in her at her age Adrian, so yeah. pretty much everybody thinks i don't know what i'm talking yeah. about because i'm a i'm a middle-aged man who is obviously disconnected from our audience right yeah. you know so being being humble and dropping your ego is an absolute necessity yes to do what we do yeah and yeah. in general I think yeah to, to be successful in general i think yeah. I, I believe that and I, 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 now I want to kind of go back to like the progression of the channel and stuff like that. Because mm -hmm. when I was looking last night, like you, got, like you got videos like in the hundred of hundreds of millions of views. Mm -hmm. Fucking crazy! Like which That's is like crazy. there's channels people have been making videos twenty years on YouTube. <laughs> However, I don't even know how long. Are you talking about YouTube us, man? Right? <laughs> well, yeah, partially us as well. That I'm like you could they wouldn't even dream a million mm -hmm. is a dream a hundred. One then one video was like 186 or 96 million. Yeah. About 150. Yeah. 160. So, uh, crazy. Just my crazy. pregnancy transformation. Yes, yes. That was a video. Yeah. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, yeah. yeah. That's insane. So I want to know when it starts to really pick up like that. And then also what is the, what are the kind of conversations you guys are having from a business perspective when that happens? I mean, for me, I was focused on the creative and like the video concepts and all the things. Gary was at that point, once we started moving, he was very much like building the team out. Mm. He started coming in with certain suggestions because, you know, when you're creative, you can be so hyper focused on this one thing and you don't see what's around. So he would be an amazing resource for me to come in and be like, hey, you know what? I kind of saw this happening. I don't know if you want to pay attention to that or that. So that really helped me to not be so focused on one thing and just get inspired from all these other things that's going on around me. But um, I, because I was also focused, I continued to like see what my audience was responding to. So I went from like nutrition videos and cooking videos into like beauty, vlogging, family, 
um, and just kind of naturally developed my, mm-hmm. you know, what my pillars were. Yeah. So when Even, you ask, sorry, go ahead. Gary. Sorry. When you ask, Anthony, when you ask, like, what, what were we thinking when these videos started hitting and the audience yeah. started growing? Yeah. I think a lot of people who are kind of maybe less mature mm-hmm. would right away think, oh, that's it. We made it. Yeah. I'm a star. Like, sure. you know, she's a star. Sure. That's it. Yeah. You know? And then they would just drop the ball. So the way that we did it is Valeria's super humble. So it didn't matter. Like the view counts never like got really to her phased, head. Yeah. She yeah. just didn't really care about it. Mm-hmm. But to me, when I saw that and I'd see like, okay, a video of any piece of content, regardless of what it is, it starts trending well, the stats are high. It's usually followed by a large influx of inbound brand deals. Yes. True. So I'm making that connection and I'm running analytics. I'm like, okay, who do we need to hire now? So, okay. Like I was doing okay. like, you know, I was doing all the accounting sales and negotiate. I was, but so like, just like, a, just like I identified with her, like, where do you spend your time? Like one, one hour. And then I said, okay, yeah, I yeah. Do. so I would look at my time and yeah, I would say, yeah, okay, you I don't want to do invoicing anymore. Here's an account, you know, here's an accounting person. I don't want to, I don't want to do sales anymore. Here's a, you and know, we, so that's really yeah. okay. we didn't invest any of our personal money into that's this. That's a really good point. We've yeah. never yeah. put a dime of our money into yeah. this from we, day one. That is that the most grand grand from the sponsor. Yeah. That, that 10 grand. grand yeah. That wow. 10 grand. Wow. After that 10 grand, that was the funding for the business in its entirety. That is the that those are the <laughs> that is the fucking best thing I've ever heard. Those are the best businesses like mm-hmm. to start off but from to be fair, that sorry, position. but to be fair, we I had an exit before, so sure. Yeah, like I know, didn't true. have to think about okay, we need to allocate three thousand dollars for rent, right? True. Yes. So those are obviously. But still, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Still, that's 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 not still, yeah. easy to do it to start a business. business yeah. f- with, you know, without touching a dollar of your own money, like yeah. essentially, right? And yeah. and in terms of even scaling, like how are you in? How are you scaling it? Were you hiring for the future? Were you doing one of those where you saw like always. okay, the next six months yeah, can look always. like that? That's that, what you were doing, I right? Think that, that, I think that's the difference. I want to make that yeah. point quickly. Is like based on what you're saying, like, okay, what's my day like? Now I need to hire an accountant, hire this. Like, what creators, there's probably, you could probably count them on two hands that were saying, like, let me build this out as an actual, like, fully functioning business with a motor behind it, people. Mm -hmm. Like, creators aren't thinking like that. They're probably more what you were saying, where it's just like, what's the next video? Yeah. It's all about, sorry, it's all about delayed gratification. Yeah. 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 So if we would have taken the money, and said, "That's it. Let's let's party." Yeah, you know. I mean, <laughs> we, we we took some of it. Yeah, I mean, sure. I mean, we didn't we didn't leave it all in. You know. Yeah. Um. We yeah we reinvested it back into into the team into people. But was it yeah. past experience that made you say like, "Hey, okay, let me start building a team around this"? It's just, I guess it's past experience, but it's, it's just common past, sense. Yeah. yeah. No, well, you it's think not that, common you think sense that, at all. Though, actually, yeah. but that's why I'm saying he's a visionary because again, back then there was not creator economy. Like now you start seeing creators building infrastructures around themselves. Correct. But I think because of his experience with his previous business where he scaled the company from zero to 400 employees, he understood how it's supposed to look like and how we're building for the future. So that was just such a powerful combination. I could focus on creative and he focused on building out the systems for it to work. Um, yeah, you got, you got to give yourself credit. That's, all, that's what I'm trying to say. You're saying it's yeah, common yeah. sense. No, it's, it's not it's common not, sense. It's, it's not. not and as you said, as you I, I said, creatives, I creatives usually the, just. Yeah. I appreciate the credit. I just yeah. don't care. Like, yeah, yeah, I know. So but I'm just so, say thank you. I'm so yeah. Thank you. I'm just, I'm just like motivated <laughs> no, okay. by different things. Yeah, you yeah. Know what I mean? yeah. Well, because you're like, hey, what's the next step? You're always thinking like, how do we yeah. grow this even bigger? Yeah. Because creatives do get in their own head and they're worried just about the content. And a lot of creators don't have someone on their side with a business mind. So I would say that's why you have a lot of success as well because you have that structure around you which a lot mm-hmm. of creators don't have. And, and yeah. a partner, which we've spoken about before. And a partner that you could trust yes. wholeheartedly because that is not easy to find 100%. just buddies or whatever through friends. Like, you know what I mean? So to have someone like you know for sure is like, this person is in my corner. Yeah. We share children. We're married. Like, okay, mm-hmm. this guy for sure wants the best for me and, and vice versa, right? And that also just taught me so much about like success professionally because mm-hmm. I feel like the way it is presented to us now, it's kind of like, oh, this guy's just really smart. He has yeah. a really great idea. Yes. But yeah. that's literally the 10% Maybe of what less, yeah. makes Smart. something successful. Yeah. You know, between the people and the infrastructure and how you manage them, like there's just so much yeah. of other factors. Um, and I think that we just don't give enough credit to all the things that are involved. How, you know? What's the, what's the size of the team today? Eight, 18, maybe? Like that's, that's, cre- that's, that's incredible. Yeah. We, we actually have a CEO. 
who yeah. runs yes. the entire operation. Yeah, yeah. which is which so is I replaced like myself on everything. That was yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was an interesting thing. So I was pregnant with Maximus, which is was our, our third son, and when we were on vacation, family vacation, I remember remember we were in the Hamptons. Yeah. And we were I remember it so clearly. We we're in the pool and you know, we worked very hard. I worked very hard. I constantly shot content. Like, I was just very driven and very focused. He was doing all the, you know, house things and making sure that everything ran smoothly. House things? What house? What are you talking about? How do you call it when you have a company? It's a house. I don't know. What do you refer it? <laughs> well, you made it sound in like house, I was in house. working on our house. <laughs> No, like house, right. don't they say like clean house? Oh, okay, yeah, I know what you're saying. He's making sure that he's making sure that the engine was was turning. <laughs> Just to be clear, I wasn't like the house cleaner. The house cleaner. He wasn't cleaning yeah. the house. <laughs> okay. I think we established that earlier yeah, 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 on yeah, in this conversation. Yeah. Um, I don't have an ego, but you know. so um, so I remember we were sitting and talking, and I was just. You know, he saw how much I was working, and I I always expressed to him, I'm like, I want to figure out how we work smarter, not harder, right? Because I see where we're going, I see what we're doing, we're already doing great. And Gary, um, at that point, was like, our next step will be hiring a CEO. And I was like, a CEO for what? Mm. It's like, for this, for this company. For... <laughs> you know, for me, I just couldn't comprehend. To me, a CEO is like a tech company or yeah. this company. Yeah. I was like, how are you going to find any... What is this even? So he was... Once he said it out loud, that's it. He went on a mission. He's like, we're finding a CEO. We're going to find someone who's going to run operations. I don't want to be involved. It will remove him to focus on like the bigger things um, and kind of focus on what the future holds. And, um, and that's how we found our CEO, who's yeah. Rachel. Well, I mean... We we found her by hiring a like very costly yeah, corporate no, we recruiter went, and yeah, yeah we yeah. did so, it in a yeah, very yeah. it wasn't like a buddy way. hey listen you know, yeah, yeah, I, got, yeah. I got a gig for you buddy yeah, yeah. yeah and yeah. I honestly I was very I mean I didn't have high hopes because we're in Canada we're in an yeah. industry that we were doing and still sometimes do we were doing so much education with the people we we're working on because no one knew they what didn't the get hell it they yeah. were doing no they were behind there's no, still there's no infrastructure yeah in Canada. yeah yeah yes. minimal you know yes. in right this, in this field so for me I'm like how are we gonna find and I mean in Canada there's great talent but is there amazing CEO level social media talent I no don't for know. it just didn't exist there was no it didn't CEO. Exist. yeah, yeah. So, not in yes. Canada so with Rachel who I mean she's awesome and you know with Rachel I think it was interesting convincing her because you're trying to convince like she's a, she's a she's a she's a from a corporate, she's a corporate world corporate, right yeah she's yeah. a corporate CEO yeah um you know and I'm just like look like this is it I don't know I kind of gave her the same pitch I'm like you're, this is Oprah you're looking at Oprah over here yeah. you know and it is what it is you want and to she believed in it right away um you know what? I think that it wasn't as much my convincing okay. that did it uh, with Rachel as it was that she saw what was happening. She was maybe already following Valeria, okay, or maybe sure. she started to, okay. and she saw she saw the same thing I did. Yeah, so but Rachel saw, and I share yeah. that vision. We have uh, Rachel is a very much of like data and numbers person. So cool. at the yeah. end of the day, when we showed her the data and numbers, she's like, Makes "Okay, sense. I'm in." Yeah, yeah. and. Um, we're very lucky because she has the corporate background, but she has that entrepreneurial spirit where she understands that we are, a lot of the moves that we're making are very new and maybe never been done before. Yeah. Yeah. So to have someone that like, you know, follows that vision, even without understanding what it is, it's... But it's even even unique. to go back a little bit now and, and the content you're putting out now, it's getting a lot of views, being in the public eye. Mm -hmm. Was that ever something that worried you being with a family and having young children? Is that something that you guys talked about? Yeah, I think in the beginning, to me, it was just very, like, innocent, endearing. I didn't know there's so many crazy people out there, <laughs> unfortunately. unfortunately. Yeah. But as we continue growing, we did start to kind of paying attention. Okay, what are we putting out there? We need to, you know, make sure that we're not capturing the kids in, like, vulnerable moments. And just making sure that you don't get so consumed by virality and social media that yeah. you lose touch with reality. And it's very sad for me to see certain people out there, you know, that are very much taking kids and capitalizing yeah. on them. So we had moments throughout our social media journey where the kids were, you know, a very prominent part of it. Um, a lot of it was even like during COVID when we were home. So obviously they True. were constantly around. But we started having early on conversation of like, okay, we need to make sure that we're putting, you know, some kind of boundaries there. Of course. And then, honestly, as the kids start getting older, I wanted to feature them less and less and less. Mm. And it was interesting because we got 
big pushback from the audience being like, hey, I love your family content. Like, bring back the kids. Yeah. And I was like, no, I won't <laughs> yeah. bring back the kids because <laughs> that's not, yeah. you know what I mean? That's not what a, it's not for sale. And uh, we just kind of left them alone. And the kids were always, we, we always talk very openly about social media, what it is, how to use it, why we use it, why we're doing what we're doing. So they're very tapped in into the culture. Yeah. And now they're, Obviously, like we ask them, you want to be in this video? Do you want to do this? You want to do this challenge? Sometimes they come, they're like, hey, I saw this thing. Let's do this. I yeah. think it's going to be great. I think the audience will love it. Yeah. So now they're, you'll see them creeping in here and there. But we made like a huge shift. We're moving away from. They want. They want to be in it. They want to be in it. You know, <laughs> I'm too. sure they love it. They probably love it. Yeah. You guys yeah. Now fun they with love it because yeah. every 12 year old is like, <laughs> I want to be a YouTuber when I True. grow up. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's crazy. It's such a different generation. With, but with the boys, yeah. With the boys, like we we always had this rule that whenever it, you know if we're vlogging and if they're in the content in any way, anything that would embarrass them mm -hmm. later in life, it's a no no. It's just yeah. Yeah. don't shoot it. We delete it and it's yeah. gone. Yeah. And that's it. And it's it's really like one of them farted in the bathtub. I won't <laughs> say which one. The one of them farted in the bathtub, and it's like we're looking at each other. Like, I don't know. Pro let's just. Uh, air. It was a, it was a, the cutest moment. Like it yeah. was yeah. really funny, and I think it would have been a viral moment, and it would have been great. But we're like, I don't know. Like when when, when you grow up, imagine there's like a video of you right now, like somewhere on YouTube <laughs> with a hundred million views. <laughs> yeah, you're like. He's yeah. gonna be like. Let's I'm gonna be. Listen, this. For me, I'd be like, throw that viral. up again. So he's the fart kid. Monetize you know? it. Let's go. <laughs> no, but like then it's like later in life. Oh, he's the farting kid, and then he gets like. You know, known for this, so we just said like, yeah, well, it, it's super cute and innocent. Yeah, you know, but we're gonna pull it. We, we we didn't put it in. But when when so, but when do you, Gary, decide? Hey, I'm gonna start building a brand around myself now because you've kind of done that. But I haven't. But you have no, though. Just, but you I have. It's starting you know, up. I it I I do it like I'm I'm very inconsistent with it. And I don't, I, I do uh, it more. I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't agree but with But I feel that. like you do it because you have fun with just it too. I'm consistent with the, the gym stuff in the mornings. because yeah, I love I, that. I, yeah, but I, that I gets me out. fired up. And everyone watching, that, that's the feeling you get watching that. Fair, fair. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I don't, I don't really take it seriously. Although, I, as you guys know, I'm starting a podcast. <laughs> yeah. Um, but to me, it's just something that I want to do to keep my finger on the pulse of the entire industry. Mm. Just so I can look at my own data. And to be honest with you, I mean, if we're being really honest, I want to yeah, have. Yeah, be really honest. I want to have. <laughs> she's always pushing me to be more honest. Um, I I want to have full control, and with Valeria's content, uh, I don't have full control, and that is something that you would think like I don't necessarily like. I can just call all the shots, but obviously there's Valeria, but even with our team, like our team is calling a lot of the shots, yeah. and even if I disagree a lot of the times, I, I do have to concede because I understand that they're now. In the weeds, and I don't even I don't have the full picture anymore. True. Yeah, you put them there. Yeah, yeah. You put right? them there. So out of respect for the team, I trust them. But like I trust them, I'll I'll do what they want to do. So I want to have the ability to put out content of my own mm -hmm. and kind of do this business with just complete control. Yeah. So yeah. that's I think one of the things that's really motivating me. And then to be honest with you, I want to be able to take my findings because I think for me, my testing ground is like it's less of a risk if we start doing like really weird stuff on Valerius. No, you can't, you can't, yeah. yeah you but can. with me, and I'm not saying to do yeah, like- Yeah, what are you planning no, to do? Hold on, wait, wait, what's going on here? But even the concept like of my podcast, like doing these like kind of autobiographical, you know, interviews, the, I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing. It's just right. kind of, I'm going with my gut. I, just to me, I just, I want to be able to have control and experiment True. and and see where it goes. I also, the reason I want to do it is because I see how much it opens doors. You mm. know what I mean? I see, I see like, to me, it's almost counterintuitive for me to do it because there's not a real road to monetization like there is for Valeria because of the demographic that she is and her audience demographic where there's all these brand deals that won't, that likely won't exist. You don't me. know that though yet. I've done I've done something for Gillette for my for shaving my head. They had there you go. Thing. You <laughs> there know, you go. I know, but that's it's not the money's very minimal. Um, yeah, to me, it's just like it's a networking thing. It's, yeah. it I think it'll bring more opportunities in the future. Of course, but I'm a little uncomfortable investing money into something where I don't see a direct path to monetization, yeah. but I'm doing it anyways. Yeah, but I, it's I kind of the world we live in though. You're, right. you're investing into your future right. at all times. The, the, it was the, easier with her because yeah. I could do the math. It's like, true. you know, the brand deals true. Kept, kept coming in. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I mean, you, you, you made that decision because you saw the 10,000, right? But even, mm -hmm. for, even for your situation, like I agree, I think the biggest thing, especially with the podcast is the doors you open. People even like, meet, even yeah. sometimes you have, let's say friends that you've known forever that when you sit across from them, 
and you start talking on camera with the with the microphones, you get intimate. Like you learn things about that person. You maybe knew them for ten years, yeah. and you learn mm-hmm. things you didn't know about them. Yeah. So you build this deep connection with these people after two hours. And like I said, you may have known them for ten years, right? Yeah. And who knows what that brings? That maybe brings new ideas, new concepts, new things come to life through that. I think that's one of the biggest thing with the, with the podcast that you see. But I really like what you said about having the social media, sort of to keep your finger on the pulse. Yeah. Because again, that that's a very that's a very forward thinking thing to do because you could be like, yeah, I got the CEO now and the team's running and I can just be in the back end. Or you can say, hey, I still am a partner in this company. Why don't I still try to see what's next for this? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which is which which is a whole, you know, position on its own. Just like who's who, you know, who's going to build the team, but who's going to keep pushing this thing forward? Right. Like, how are we going to take this to the next step? Yeah. Which is like, I think one of that's something that I don't believe you can teach. I believe that that is something you have to have in you. That's my belief. You have to, you have to exercise. Like you have to do it. You have yeah, to 100%. It. You, you have it naturally. Of course, you need to keep exercising yeah. the muscle, but I don't believe you can teach that. I, I'm curious what your thoughts are on that. I just, in terms, sorry, what's the question? Like, uh, like to be a visionary and to see like wh- what it, what's the next move for a, for a corporation, a big business. I don't believe anyone can just do that. I think you sort of have to have it in you and then exercise it and keep it moving. So I, I, I don't I believe that. I didn't have it in me. I have, a, no? I have a degree in geology. I'm like the yeah, but, yeah, but the thing, degree doesn't matter. Like no, I know, but but I became an entrepreneur out of necessity because like I kept getting fired. Fair, right? okay. And I needed All to right. like I needed to eat. It happens to a lot of people. It does happen yeah. to a lot yeah. of people. I think a lot of people. You're you're right. And it comes people, from hardship. People become some entrepreneurs sort. because nobody like they're not they're not employable. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And that's and that's fine. So uh, like I don't necessarily your question is kind of I think nature versus nurture in the sense that do I believe people are just innately born with it. Mm-hmm. That's it. I think there are some people who just have like raw talent, but if they don't actually execute and if they're not putting the work in, it's like mm-hmm. it's already an old topic on the internet that you know we, yeah. we you have to work really hard. But unless they're not if, if they're not executing on it, then you, you just you're not gonna be talented and you're not gonna be talented forever. And going back to the podcast, I feel it's gonna keep me somewhat like it'll keep me sharp to a certain degree. Of course, mm-hmm. it definitely will. I, I enjoy these conversations. Like right now, this is probably one of the favorite things that I do is being on a pad- podcast or anything to do with the content. Like I review most of the content that Valeria puts out. Like all this, like it comes to me first. I give my feedback along with other people. So I just enjoy anything to do with content. Yeah. I don't enjoy things to do with like accounting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. Sure. So I want to keep Except myself accounting sharp. Accounting money. Yeah. <laughs> I want to, I want to, I want to keep myself sharp by having this podcast and having my own forum. Mm-hmm. I just want to keep myself sharp and I yeah. just enjoy it. I enjoy yeah. And I especially enjoy like the subject matter that I'll be covering. Yeah. Um, I just enjoy hearing people's stories and understanding what they had to go through to get to where they are. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, it makes sense. So before we get into like the next phases of your business and your career, you made the move to Miami, mm-hmm. yes. right? So what, what went into that decision? Why did you guys make the move? My wife was very kind to <laughs> allow me to believe that it was my decision. And what, what year was this? Nice. Nice. What year was this? This was two years ago. Two years ago. We got okay. here. We arrived here. We came on vacation. Okay. Uh, May 4th. We were supposed to be here for three months. In Canada, we were escaping <laughs> the lockdown the second yeah. time. Yeah. The first time we escaped. No, that was like the third. No. So the first time we escaped to Costa Rica. No, the first time we sat doing zombie apocalypse like everyone We didn't else. escape <laughs> it. The first time we sat in Toronto like idiots. Yeah, the <laughs> second one we went to Costa Rica. The yeah. third one, I was like, I'm not doing this. Anymore. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and that's when we decided so she, to come to Miami. We were in the car, we were driving, and uh, Doug, I was about to say Tom Ford, Doug Ford <laughs> made an announcement. <laughs> that's when you know you live in Miami right. now exactly. instead. <laughs> Doug, Ford, um, Doug Ford made an announcement, like, I'm locking shit down again, and you know, like, um, he was like locking the tennis courts. I'm like, locking the tennis courts? Yeah, yeah. playgrounds, like, everything. You're yeah, like yeah. 40 feet away from each other. What, <laughs> yeah, what are you yeah, worried yeah. about yeah, the tennis yeah. courts for? Yeah. So we were in the car, and she looked at me, we were in the car, and she's like, Get me out of here immediately. I don't care what you have to do. Yeah. Get me out of here immediately. I can't continue to function, do my job, or do anything uh, here. So yeah. please get me out of here. The only place that was still standing was Miami. Yeah. yeah. Right. There were no lockdowns. Life was free here. We yeah. know, we've been talking to people, and you know we knew about it. So I literally I shipped immediately shipped two our two cars. Like two days after that, I my, our cars were gone. That's it. I shipped the cars. I uh, I got a three month rental. And I chartered a plane. And so it was me, Valeria, three kids, two nannies, and a driver. Wow. And we were just like flying out, Escaping. Of, the, uh, out of the apocalypse. <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah. like, if there was like a nuclear blast. Yeah, like behind you and you're out, driving. Yeah, and yeah. the plane just made the it. James you know, the, Bond one, just, the James Bond vibe, yeah. <laughs> that's right. The plane just got out, you know. 
So that's what happened. And then after we were here for a month, um, I looked at Valeria and I'm like, yeah, well, why do we live in Toronto? What, what did you, uh, besides the, the awful lockdowns, did you guys see any other opportunity here? Like her being an influencer, being in Miami, yeah. of course, and then also the, the kids, the children. So yeah, yeah. For sure. I feel like for me, I kind of got to a point where, I mean, I moved a lot throughout my life and I lived in a lot of places. Gary didn't. So okay. for Gary, Canada was amazing. Toronto was perfect. I kind of felt like we're already reaching that point where it's time to go, yeah. you know? And I couldn't really see how we're going to make it happen. At first, I thought, okay, the plan is we're going to get super big and then we'll move to L.A. because that's the hub of it. Yeah. But uh, when all these lockdowns happened, I was like, we got to go. Yeah. Now. Gotta yeah. Go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's when amazing. we came to Miami, I just, I connected very fast with just the energy here and the pace here. Yep. And I felt like in Canada, I was working all the time and I was just like waiting until I can like start living in a way, mm -hmm. you know? There's no like, I didn't have the culture of living in Toronto. Yeah. And when we got here, I was like, it makes, like I see why I work so hard. Like it makes sense, it yeah. motivates me. So I told Gary, you know, we're talking about moving to the US for a while now. Don't no, you think this we would be a great yeah, yeah. opportunity? Great opportunity. We great. Talking. When did we talk about moving <laughs> to the US? We did. We, 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 we said once we hit certain financial often. goals, and yes. then Canada will be too small, and yeah, we'll have to move to LA. But we didn't yeah. really. They you could, you could, I feel like Canada is one of those places talking? in every industry you can reach the top very quickly if you if you if you work hard. The thing is, you have to. And as it. an influencer too, like she might have been maybe one of the biggest influencers in Canada at that time. Hey, you're not wrong. Look, I think look in Canada, there's a lot of wealthy people, like a lot. Yeah, so that's for a, sure. It's a, very, it's a very affluent country. Yeah. Um, in in various industries, I just I think like this industry, like show business, kind of in general, but kind of the influencer, like the creator economy specifically. I just think there's not enough infrastructure. It's behind. It's just behind. But it's behind. It's it's an economic reason. Yeah. It's behind. It's behind because there's not enough money being poured into True. Canadian creators mm -hmm. from brands yep. in order for those creators to continue. Yeah. So when we were looking at the business case to moving here, it wasn't just like, oh, palm trees, let's move here. It was like, okay, women all over the world who are in this, like her, her demographic, like 18 to 35-year-old women all over the world, Every single one of them at some point in their lives has said, I want to move to Miami or I want to visit Miami. Yeah, I want to party, whatever. Not one of them has said that about Toronto. Facts. So, <laughs> very so, true. Right? Very true. And very not true. that there's anything wrong with Toronto, but it's not a it's not a hub. It's not like a cultural no. and kind of relevant hub from that perspective. There's yeah. only a handful of cities you're that gonna are like hurt, that. You're going to hurt a lot of people with that one. I mean, we people, say this all the time. From, no, no, we say it all the time. No, but I don't mean but it in our audience says it. Yeah, yeah. People from Toronto, they're just so proud of, of but what's they there. Be. There Toronto's should be. There's should, a lot to be proud but, of. hundred yeah. percent. But from the, like the whole cultural aspect, that's like a tough one that we've noticed for people from Toronto to, to swallow. It's a tough pill to swallow. But I think what you said was important. And a lot, a lot of people don't understand, especially from a, let's say creator perspective is that why is a brand going to pour money into an influencer that only has 30 million people In technically to influence a, a certain product to compared to 300 million? Like you're right. There's the, yes, so there, there's that which I wholeheartedly agree with. But there's also the fact that it's not when brands look at influencers, they're not only they're looking at where they live, not so much because that's where their audience is. Because in most cases, the audience is actually spread. Could be out. everywhere. Yeah, be everywhere. fair, fair. They look at it from a branding perspective. Do I want Toronto? If you had a brand, <laughs> no, you the answer brand, is no. I would say, not. Let's say, uh, yes. let's say if you had a brand and you had to choose an influencer, same numbers, right? Same same audience size, Miami. same engagement metrics. And your product was fashion. You sure. had a fashion brand. Yeah. Are you hiring an inf somebody with the backdrop in Toronto? No. Or Miami or LA? Or, or New, New York. York? Yeah. Right. Yeah, I'm going to New That's York, it. Miami, whatever. That's yeah. it. Right. So it's not about Toronto being a good or a bad place. Toronto's a good place. Sure. It's about the, it's supply and demand. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. The brands are not demanding that market. Yeah. Period. Mm -hmm. So sure. we reached a pinnacle financially. Um, Although it was still on an upwards trajectory, and if we had stayed, we probably would have continued. Um, Valeria argues that point. She says she doesn't think it would. Um, you know, w we thought that number one, the audience will be more interested about what happens in Miami. Mm -hmm. um, so, in terms of audience growth, to me, it kind of took the cap of, off of audience growth, potential audience growth, and then also uh, brands. Brands yeah. now recognize you. Oh, okay, you're you're an American. Yeah, you're in America. You're in Miami. And yeah. did all that come to come to life when you actually moved here? Uh, yes, 
slower than I thought it would. Okay. I thought it would be like flip Instinct. a switch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's taken time. The br- now it's starting to like it's it's an exponential curve. Of course, yes, of course. And it's it's starting to happen. But I thought it would be overnight. Yeah, but it wasn't, mm. which is fine. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but it's happening now because it takes time for them to be like, oh, okay, you're in America. It's like yeah. I mean, you know. there's still people that I meet that they're like, oh, where did you come from? From LA or New York? I'm like, no, I moved from Toronto. And these are people that have been following me for a long time. They're like, wow. You lived in Toronto? It's like, yeah. Because I was know. shooting in Richmond Hill, did I? Know. Yeah, true. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, so you get to my. When does the when does the clothing brand start? When it started or when it closed? Both. <laughs> we I, we know it closed, but I want to know when yeah. it started. What was the mindset behind that and the vision? Yeah. So the mindset was um, honestly it was came from a place of like fashion, but also came from a place of just common sense. Yeah. If you're promoting all these fashion brands, just Correct. promote my own. We are getting paid all the time to promote certain things, certain things that I want to promote don't exist in the market. I'm like, hey, here's a little thing I want to create. We started with jewelry and sunglasses. I'm like, I want to create jewelry. I knew the niche I wanted to be in. And uh, we started doing that. And it went really well. Like, the idea came to life. um, And that's when we decided, okay, we're going to start building out this, like, e-commerce brand. And especially... I feel like there's a lot of obviously the creators, everyone's starting a brand, you know, so yep. you're like, okay, I'm a creator, I'm going to start a brand. <laughs> yep. uh, and uh, you have the audience, like everything makes sense. And we started doing that and then we s- continue kind of expanding into uh, loungewear and active where COVID happened. We had to like pivot a million times. We rebranded three times. Like it was constantly us trying to figure out how to make yeah. it work. And I think that we... We kind of looked at it as a business case, and uh, we've realized that it's just not it. Like, that's not where our strength mm-hmm. is at. Yeah. And, it's a uh, tough market to be in clothing. It's a tough market. I think that, especially coming from a market like social media, where you see immediate gratification, you see immediate results, yeah. to do something that it takes you a year and a half to develop, and then you just never know. Yeah, it's right? much slower. How, right, much yeah. slower. Um, Everything is just, everything was so hard. But we were very yeah. motivated and we kept like investing in it. We kept on trying to hire people. We changed a lot of people. Yeah. We really, really tried. Yeah. And <laughs> it just didn't work. So so would you say now, like what, what is the main core of Valeria Inc? Is it is it the content? And like, well, I want to understand the, the monetization well. side of it. Like what, yeah. what does that look like? I mean, right now, I think especially after closing the e-commerce brand, it became very evident to me that our strength is media, Mm. it's content, it's, you know, I expertise in the industry. Um, A lot of our brand partners value that expertise very much. So I want to continue developing that aspect of the business. So we've been referring to ourselves and presenting ourselves as a media company, although it revolves, uh, revolves around one personal brand. There are so many avenues we can expand into in terms of like consulting and yes. you know, continue to develop the, the media and things like that. So I see that that's where it's going. Mm-hmm. Um, my newest kind of project is the podcast. And yes. to me, it's like a very natural evolution into what I want to do. I love fashion. I love the lifestyle. But if I want to be Oprah. Yeah, it's true. true. You got to get on the mic. You got to get on the mic. And this is another like part of that like self-development, you know, journey that I have because this is also something that really scares me. And yeah. I even this morning we were talking about it and I'm just like, I I don't feel strong doing it yet. Like mm-hmm. I feel feel very scared and it's so out of my comfort zone. But usually those that's what signals me to keep going. Right. Because yeah. I have so much room to grow. So. Yeah, I feel like we're going to continue doing that, just developing the personal brand. And um, and Gary has a lot of other ideas he's working on. Do you think it could eventually be like a, a media company that has other creators under it as well? We were talking about it. We we're like toying with the idea. But w- you know what? There's so many of these companies out there True. and so little of them bring actual value. So. We've Facts. been kind of. Uh, it's true. Going. I think you guys have the proof, though, right? Like. Right. Like I, we know what a creator needs. Yes. We know what we need from the creator, and yeah. we actually had a little like case study with the creator where we tried to manage. Okay. And that was a long time ago. That was a very long time ago. But what it showed us is like even if you give all the tools to the creator, at the end of the day, they have to have the work ethic. They have to. They need to want. It. Yes. True. yes. And a lot of creators. Don't. Don't, yeah. 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 Or yeah. they do sometimes and sometimes yeah. they don't. It's on and off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. But for us, we like, this is a business. This got to go. So yeah. 
we we keep kind of bouncing ideas here and there, trying to find a solution to what can really bring something different to the market and yeah. be helpful to the creators. So mm -hmm. I think I think the you know when we talked about when we talk about expansion, like when we talk about like kind of what's next and how do we continue to scale, um, you know the most important aspect is continuing to build Valeria's personal brand. Yes, and true. And what we now realize, where I was very, very kind of analytical and focused on data and numbers, there's another element to it. So yes, the audience continue, that has to continue to scale, the number of followers, the engagement metrics, all of that has to continue to go up. But there's this qualitative star factor and also the perception of just the audience and brands and just everybody of, an individual's star power. Hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So we have to continue working both the, the quantitative and the qualitative for Valeria. And yes. now that comes from a lot of PR. We actually have like a full-time in-house PR person um, that's dedicated to, you know, communicating with the media to place Valeria, you know, and to, to continue to develop Valeria as a thought leader. Um, so that's the big thing. So, I, you know, in terms of expansion, I want to see that quantitative, those qua that quantitative mm -hmm. piece go yeah. up, continue yeah. to go up. And I want to see the qualitative piece continue to go up. Yep. Um, and a lot of that has to do with Valeria's self-optimization, like self-development. Um, you know, she's constantly educating herself about things that are important to her audience. And the thing is, going back to the clothing brand, she was spending 30% of her time designing clothes. Yeah. Like with, with, a, with a designer. But yeah. she was like on it. She was... And that attention that she had to give that 30% of her time, that was the biggest, I think, challenge Reason. with that business was that the ROI on her on that 30% of her time just wasn't there. Didn't make Whereas sense. Mm -hmm. now she's putting it into the podcast. And as you guys know, with the podcast, it's just it's a content yes, factory, true. right? Yes, because true. the podcast, as you know, is like that big piece of content. You slice it up. So it's just it's more content. So that's where I think the biggest expansion is. We often get approached because Valeria is friendly with a lot of you know fairly large influencers and so yeah we're always getting approached asking how do we do this how do we do that can you help us monetize um so yeah maybe there's a play mm -hmm. i think at some point yeah, yeah uh maybe soon i'm not sure like uh, myself and rachel are mostly talking about it and we're really diving into what that model will look like the financial model will look like sure um so we'll see yeah. we'll see but i think i think there is a play there because mm -hmm. there are agencies that do have good scale and they have pretty good multiples in terms of their their um, enterprise value. So I, I think there's something there. Yeah, yeah, that's something we noticed. We just noticed like even us as a smaller channel, uh, smaller creators, like we've had conversations with massive creators and from a monetization perspective, they mm -hmm. sort of look the same and we're mm -hmm. like, wait, you're not doing that? Wait, you're not doing that right, right now because I also feel like when you're smaller, you got to get more creative. You like you want to yeah. keep the yeah. show going, you got to find new streams of revenue, right? Where I feel like a lot of these big creators like they had a great YouTube career and stuff like that, but they're missing out on these other platforms or whatever. Where it's like, hey, like there's there's hundreds of thousands of dollars waiting for you, maybe millions depending on your size, somewhere you didn't even realize. By the way, yeah, I don't right? I don't like your terminology. No, respectfully, Which I like one? you very much. I don't Which like your terminology one? in this instance. Okay, I don't like what this sense? terminology of like smaller creators, bigger creators. Okay. I just I don't think I don't think the quantify like quantifying a creator because okay. I know the number you're using. You're using total subs. Well, yeah, you got. I mean, you got. You, you got to <laughs> yeah, use something. You, you got to put framework. something. But that's incorrect because you can't say you're a smaller creator. You can be just as talented with, as somebody with you know, 10 or 100 times the audience. It doesn't make you a smaller creator. So less no, popular. You're a creator talent. with a smaller audience. But I don't okay. like saying smaller okay. creators right. because that's fair. That's fair. I appreciate that. Yeah, that. thank you. Yeah, yeah. 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 I don't consider you guys small creators. Okay. I don't consider you small creators sure. because I think you guys are really talented. Thank you. You know, just like I believe when my wife was quote unquote a small creator, yeah. I thought she was very talented. So I, I think that's something that needs to change in the industry as well. I mean, I think I think a lot of creators put their kind of professional self-esteem in you know in, in the, the numbers of, in the hands of the algorithms mm. in terms of the numbers i just think it's wrong so but i just I wanted do, to I just no no i actually like yeah. that i mean that, that's a great way to put it for sure i mean but you know as a, as a creator you always seem to go back to like how many subs do i have how many yeah. followers I have you know because that's the easiest way to just look and, and quantify right, right? right. Mm. if you focus on this yeah yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. If you focus on that, that'll come. Well, you, you know what? I, I, I will say this. I'm going to give us a little bit of a boost on this podcast. Right. I think that although we have, let's say, a smaller uh, base than a lot of other people in, in doing the same thing as now us. Now I like your terminology. We have, smaller base we now. have 
uh, our community is so strong. Mm -hmm. Like we're whatever we community. say, yeah. if we say we like something, they sh we should we're doing something. Like they fucking run and they do it. They buy it. Whatever. I think that's something that's in it, unique about what. It's so another thing where big, bigger creators with bigger platforms, you yeah. see that, and they can't even sell like 20 t shirts. Yeah. Right. So it's like, okay, but where's your real following? Where's now? your influence? Where's the people that are actually influenced by you? Um, I want to get into the content a bit. Hold on, before we do, I just yeah, want to okay. I I give you guys some additional praise. Yeah, do it. Okay. Uh, no, no, we'll take no, it. Wait, no, we'll no, take no, it off. Okay, yeah, keep it going. Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> I, I do because I've been in this business now for five, five six years. Yeah. And I can see when a creator, when I think, someone's going to blow up and someone's not going to blow up. Mm. When I saw Valeria, it, I, I, you already, I already, we already went through of that. Course, I already yeah. knew. Like yeah, I, already knew. Yeah, yeah. I feel, I feel similar about you guys. Thank you. Thank when you. I see the quality of your work and I see, and I see the progress because you had me on your podcast, I think less than a year ago. Yep. And when I see from that to this, in terms of the quality of your production and everything that you guys are doing, the speed at which you did that to me is, is very impressive. Thank you. Thank you. And, I'm noticing it's exponentially. And I'm talking about on the qualitative side. Yeah. yeah. Exponentially, it's getting better. So you're going to have this kind of like, like inflection point. And I, I mentioned this to you before. You said this Ernesto. to me, yeah. You, you guys will see an, a, a crazy exponential curve on all of these numbers that you guys are fussing about now. <laughs> yeah. Continue focusing on your craft and you'll see it's going to continue going up. And by your craft, I mean your own, like you yourselves of as course. personal brands, yeah. what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And the production value, because I really like the production value. No, it's thank true. you. It's true. He he was really proud of you guys. No, thank he you. Talks about you guys all the time. <laughs> but I have to say, I have to thank the guys behind the scenes. True. You can't it's see our, on it's our team, you know. Because if it wasn't yeah. for these guys, absolutely, this none of this sure. would be what it is. Absolutely. So, absolutely. but Definitely but I appreciate that. Thank you. And and you know what's funny is like when we had you on, we were somewhere between I think eight and nine hundred subs. <laughs> we're at ninety thousand. That's so amazing. So the growth has been there. But again, when you look, I see your channel, 160 million views on a video. I'm like, holy shit. <laughs> he gets yeah, a little depressed. Know, he goes in the club. No, I know, I know. But, but it's just, I, it's I a, look at so many different true, channels true. and I feel the same way. Yeah. You know? It's so. just, it's a competitive yeah. thing. You know, when you, when you want it that bad, you start to, that's sort of the way yeah. you look at it, right? Mm -hmm. so. so in terms of the content, how much, how much, how many pieces of content are you putting out, would you say, a day on all platforms? On all platforms? I mean... On Instagram, we post between two to three times a day, okay. and then there's stories every day. In terms of TikTok, it's usually once a day. YouTube, we post once a week. Yeah. Uh, Facebook, I don't know because I don't touch Facebook. Facebook is more of a syndication at this point. Yeah. And is it is it you're kind of recycling the content, or is every platform getting different type of content? YouTube has its own content. Instagram and TikTok will sometimes overlap, but yeah. but not always. But not always, yeah. yeah. Why I'm asking is because I think you you did a you guys did a very good job with brand partnerships mm -hmm. and also retaining them on mm -hmm. a longer basis than most creators where usually a creator will do a one-time gig and maybe never hear from the brand again where mm -hmm. I feel like you guys have been working with a lot of brands for a long time. Mm -hmm. So how have you been able to do that? I think that the education part comes into play a lot for us okay. because we very much push on our brand partners okay. because, you know, a lot of them come, they have kind of an idea. There's an executive sitting being Sorry, like, this mean, would be... You mean you push back? You push back. That's yeah. What you push on your brand partners. Oh, you push back. Push back we're not, on we're not pushing them around. We're <laughs> no, we're pushing back on a lot of concepts okay. because I think that, you know, there's always an executive sits there being like, this would be such a cool idea. Yeah. But when you approach every single influencer, they all have such a unique audience, such a unique way of, you know, talking about certain things. So we, um, I mean, for me, it's very important to make sure that every piece of content brings value, if it's entertainment, education, whatever it is but that it is authentic to me and will translate to people. So they won't be like, where did this come from? Yeah. Um, so that's to me is one of our kind of strengths. The other strength is we also internally, we're very client focused. Um, we have a team that Gary and Rachel built that truly caters to these brand partners. And just like I said, there's a lot of agencies for creators that like promising all these wonderful yeah. things, but never follow through. The same thing happened when these brands go to these agencies that are supposed to bring them creators, right? There's so much like disconnect, so many things go. 
we really streamlined that whole process. So for our brand partners, like we want them to be like, of course we're gonna work with Valeria. Content is great and it's the easiest thing to work with them. Okay. Yeah, cool. So I feel like we've really kind of nailed down that formula of like yeah. when a brand comes in to exactly. when the content we're like, come to here. handle them. Yeah. Right. We're here. We'll support you. You need advice. We'll give you advice. We'll make sure that, you know, the messaging is right where, you know, we're bringing you a unique product. And I think we've done that really, really so, well. So just to expand on what Valeria is saying, I mean, when we say we have 18 people, like most of these people are there to make our clients happy. We're yeah. a client focused business. Customer we service, have two groups yeah. of clients. That's the brands and the audience. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. On the brand side, I mean, we have dedicated people who, like, once a contract is negotiated and closed, that's, like, that's one person. Yeah. Uh, then it goes to another person. We have two full-time client relationship managers. So they're, they they take that contract. Um, they're the ones working with the clients on the creative briefs. They'll go back and forth with the client. They'll bring in uh, our, our, you know, we have a director of production. Uh, in some cases, Valeria will come in if it's not so straightforward. Okay. Um, that person also has a ton of, like, at this point, hundreds of um, brand deals, like, like brand campaigns that we've done to say, hey, look, like, here's, like, you know, we did, like, something like that. We just have a lot that yeah, we... Yeah, you have a big resume that you yeah, to show we just, for. We yeah, we just know, oh, okay, you have a pink T-shirt. Okay, like, we know how to... Place how to, your pink how to get that, in yeah. the best way mm -hmm. to, build, to build your brand affinity. Cool. You know what I mean? So we already have a lot of that knowledge. And then afterwards, and the, you know, afterwards, like once it's done, like we have the editors, we like all the editing gets done, but then we have like post reports. So we have all this like suite of analytics that we give them afterwards. And we keep getting told like no one's giving this to us because an, a, a creator who's working kind of by themselves, On being every, they're, yep. they're just not going to have that data. Yeah. True. An agency will try to get it, yeah. but try to get a creator to gather. No, these yeah. little bits. Like <laughs> not when they're doing every not. role themselves. Like yeah. We have people like all they do is like after the campaign is, is, is gone, like is, is up, they'll put in a report that will include the kind of uh, front facing numbers that everybody can see, but also the back numbers that they can't see. So okay. there's a lot, there's a lot of process mm -hmm. and that's why they, that's why they continue to work. <laughs> yeah. So they and, come back. and is there like, is this how it goes? Like you would find out about a brand deal at the end of it when it's already confirmed or are you part of the process? No. Um, the great thing is now we reach kind of a point where we have our roster of clients. We always cool. have new clients because there's new brand that I like and we reach out or that come to us and I like the concept, but we have like a great return rate with our clients. So mm. a lot of, a lot of our brand partners are companies that I love and it's just an easy process. Recurring, yeah. The new ones that come in, everything goes through me. So like I try the product, I check it out, I make sure they don't have any lawsuits, you know. <laughs> True. Yeah. You can't That's be too careful call. today. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so we do a lot of kind of background check, make sure that everything is kosher and uh, and then we we proceed. Well, we, I, th I think to the, give you some, yeah. sorry, I apologize. No, to no, give no, you some context, we probably only take one in 10 inbound well, that's, that's the next thing I was going to say was, is you probably keep the content authentic because you're working with brands that you like. Yeah. But then so also, when did that happen that you were able to be picky about that diligence. side? There's because there's a lot of creators you can tell they're working oh with brands God. they don't like. I think that's important to note. Yeah. I worked with a lot of brands I didn't necessarily align with. In the beginning. Entirely of in the beginning. And that was part of our like war, right? Okay. Because for me, I'm like, I'm not putting my face on this, my name <laughs> is gonna story? discredit <laughs> us. And he's like, Listen, in order for us to get to a point where we can say no to these people, we we need that money. So yeah. we can continue building. We have to build the resume that you right. have of all this. Yeah. But I mean everything would for me was just the end of the world. <laughs> like we had this one the Raid? The Are you gonna tell about Raid? Which one was it? Is it Raid? It was Raid. Like it the sp like the, the, the bug spray. spray. The bug spray. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So they reached out, they offered us a lot of money. It was like meaningful. <laughs> and I was she's like, like, no, she's like, I'm, I'm not, not doing this. She's like, nope, not doing it. I'm like, babe, we're doing it. And she's like, No, I'm not doing it. She goes, It's completely off brand, it has nothing to do with me. I'm like, what do you mean it has nothing to do with you? You have kids in a house. You yeah, you can play, you could, yeah, you could play the fla family card on that one. Yeah, yeah of yeah. course. <laughs> I was like, we go, I'm going to get murdered online. Like, yeah. they're going to kill me. It's yeah. going to be horrible and all the things. Um, and then he was just like, I'm sure you can make a great piece of content. <laughs> yeah. like, you are so creative. You're so smart. I was yeah. like, okay, wait. I had her walking around. She was like spraying for <laughs> bugs while the kids are eating. I'm going to keep the bugs off the kids when they're but, eating. But you know what? It's true. You, at the beginning, like you kind of do have to be a yes man or yes woman to a certain extent and build that yeah. resume. But 
at what point did you start saying, you know what, I want to be a lot more picky with, was it just the amount of money you were making? Was it your following? What made you want to decide, okay, you know what? There was enough money it's just in the financials, bank that right? No. But, okay, but cool. um, uh, something interesting you said, but I, I don't why know. Why is there enough money in the bank? Some people True. never have enough money True. in the bank, well, right? But you guys so. felt like you had it. Like right. you guys felt like you were at that point. Yeah, I think that exactly. I think we reached this point where it's like, hey, it's time to just really hyper focus on continuing building, you know, the association with our personal brand. And in order to serve these amazing clients that we love and want to retain, we can this this. Um, yeah, but I, know. but yeah, but I, I disagree with that because like to do something like we did SO as well, but to do like to do SO like the gas station. Yeah. Oh, cool. That's dope. Well, what? We have a car. They do brand partnerships? It's dope <laughs> back did. then, was, but I was like, ago. Gary, all the environment people will come <laughs> oh after me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And he's fine. like, it's Don't fine. Don't worry about them. Don't get me started. Look, it's, it's, it's okay because it's all a matter of value, right? So will some of the audience be upset that you're repping Raid and Esso? Yeah. Yes. However, when you put out as much volume of quality and thoughtful content as Valeria does... Yeah. And that's what I always told her. I said, you don't have to worry. Don't worry about this one thing. Don't mm -hmm. worry about raid. You know, continue making awesome content because if you give them 10 pieces of content and then you give them raid and then you give them it's 10 fine. pieces yep, of content. It's fine. Yeah, it comes and it yeah, goes. You're gonna have you're gonna have a little cohort of people yeah. who are like, you know, complain and okay, no problem. Yeah. Keep pushing quality. Yep. And then you can put in these brands. Look, unless the brands are like Something crazy. Yeah. Guys, yeah. Balenciaga's calling tomorrow. Uh, yeah, then we no. have a yeah. huge issue. Yeah. Right? We're saying no. Yeah. But yeah. like when it's an extreme case like that, we'll say no. But yeah. for the most part, like if it makes sense, then what's the problem? But but uh, you, you said something that you guys do out, outbound mm -hmm. to just brands started. you like. No, okay, I'm very curious about that because I haven't really heard any creators ever say that they're reaching out to brands that they want to yeah. work with. I don't think that's a common thing. I think thing. a lot of small following content creators do that do right yeah. where okay. you just like but try not big to go. but not yeah big you're just trying to get no. partnerships in general yeah. yeah because for us at the end of the day like if i try a product and i truly love it i mean i'm not going to sit and wait for them to call us true we're going to call them because like now that. we also like have that. a great pitch we have a great product like mm -hmm. we can you know this is a beneficial yeah, you can sell them yeah, yeah. everyone's going to win it's right not, also like if valeria just like is wearing something let's say a lot of the stuff we do is fashion right so if valeria is wearing something and she tags it and that thing will get like, I don't know, man, like 50,000 sticker taps or whatever that number is. Yeah. Um, the social media manager who's managing like on the brand that side, brand side yeah. they may not know. Mm. Right. So what we'll do is when we see like when we see a pickup like that, because we have we have somebody analyzing that data all the time. When we see that pickup, we'll then we reach have out. A, we have a person who will then yeah. reach out, say, hey, look. But what they'll do is they won't contact the social media manager. They'll contact the CEO or the CMO or the whoever, VP of whatever. Yeah. And they'll say, hey, look, like. This is the data. We just posted this organically. We had a really good response from our client, uh, from our audience. Would you like to engage? Yeah. And so we get we get pretty good, you know. Yeah, imagine. Sure. Pretty, pretty good response with that. I think we also give a lot of credit to, like, these people that are sitting at these companies. They can possibly monitor or understand or have a creative vision for every single thing. Yeah, so true. you as a creator, I think it's such a powerful move when you reach out and you're like, listen, I got a concept. I think it's going to be amazing. True. A but, lot yeah. of them are like, yeah. damn, thanks. You did the work that's for us. That's because yeah, you yeah, also don't, true, have, you don't right. have an ego though. A yeah. lot of yeah, creators 100%. with your platform would be like, I'm not reaching out and then they could reach out to me. No, it yeah. can be. It's all about the money. Let's go. It's, it's all about the dollars. dollars. So we, we started going outbound. Um, we had a couple of iterations because we couldn't get it right. It took us about maybe a year and a half. We, we didn't have the right person. Now we have the right person. We're mm -hmm. really happy with her. Um, but it, but up until fairly recently, it was all inbound interest. Right? Yeah, yeah. So the, the, the concept is you keep putting out amazing content. The content hits, more inbound interest. But then we said we, we want to control the flow a little bit better. Yeah. So then we, we, yeah, we have an outbound person. And, oh, know, I love she, that. She reaches out to brands that Valeria likes or that she reps organically um, or we think that, you know, something could work and and that's that's proven to be a really good uh, a good move the reason i'm bringing it up and i like that is because we've literally like i think it's been two weeks that we just started reaching out to we said you know what we got this following we engagement's high like why don't mm -hmm. we just reach out to people we want to work you, with you should put a full-time person on 100%. yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, poor jay we got jay he's doing 20 jobs right now and that's <laughs> jack of all of trades over here. yes but, uh, but no, I, and that's why i asked because we just started doing it like yeah. we just were like hey you know what fuck it like mm -hmm. why not there's you know what? nothing to we lose can, what i'll do is if you guys are interested we can show you kind of like what those like it's a script right like yeah, you send of that email of course what those scripts you'll have to modify it obviously of you course. guys have completely different content i'd love to see that i would love yeah but yeah like we'll share that with you and then, and then and 
just identify, and you mm -hmm. also have to identify the decision makers in these organizations. Mm -hmm. Yes, you have yes. to make sure you're reaching to the right, the right the people. Right yeah, like yeah, a, no, DM, a DM on their Instagram is not going to do it. What's yeah. that website called that shows you Rocket Reach? Rocket Reach. Yeah. Rocket mm -hmm. Reach. Nice. Okay, so you have a combined following of what five, six million right now. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. How does, <laughs> how does it feel to influence that many people or be admired by that many people? think about it look how nervous she gets look. See that? You, see that <laughs> you have nervous? to think about it come on i don't think about it at all actually i think gary thinks about it a lot more okay. i think for me is especially recently i really like leaned so much more into the creative role where before i was like no i gotta know what was going on in every aspect of the business i need to be involved in every aspect of the business i'm so over it i'm so done with the girl bossing mm -hmm. like i want to <laughs> Take it away. Here, take it. <laughs> yeah. Before I was, you know, if anyone would be like, oh, you know, Gary's responsible for your success, I would be like, no, I did this and I went, <laughs> now I'm like, yeah, he did everything, actually. Yeah, yeah sure. So if yeah, you have yeah. any questions, you talk to yeah, him. Why, why are you laughing? Guys? Guys? You laugh I'm, laughing I'm laughing because it took me years to get to this point where I kept telling her, Valeria, stop. Like, you can know about, I'm, I'm fine with you knowing about the business. Stay out of operations, not because there's you don't provide value there. You do, you provide value there. But you provide a million times yeah. more value when On you're this creating side. content. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I said, I can hire people to take care of the business side. I'm overseeing a lot of the stuff on the business side. I, I can't hire somebody to do what you do. You're the star. Yeah, so true. just concentrate on the creative. And I always told her, like, don't think that your contribution is somehow trivialized because you're not in the weeds on the business side. Yeah. Your contribution <laughs> is huge. It's massive. And you know where I got this from? With that business that I had in um, uh, that Facebook-related business that yep. I had. So we worked, as I mentioned, we had 1,000 Facebook pages. We worked with a lot of celebrities. And when I went down to L.A., we had an office in L.A. And when I went down there and I spent time, because we were talking to the agencies to like start uh, bringing on their celebrities. Yeah. And I was like at C uh, CAA and WME and all these like big agencies. Yep. And I saw how they catered to celebrities. It, it was like some reversal weird alternate universe where they're just running after them, like with little cappuccinos, anything, you know, Mr. So-and-so. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'd be sitting there for the first time seeing like celebrities at that caliber. And, and Marlon, who was my yeah. partner, Marlon Waynes, he's like, dude, he's like, if you don't stop looking like a tourist, like that's it, this shit's <laughs> over. Like, yeah, that's true. Stop, because I'd be like, oh my God, I like these movie stars yeah. walking by. But my point is, is that that Hollywood understands and Hollywood's built this huge like infrastructure, this multi-billion dollar infrastructure around celebrities to keep them out of the business and concentrated on the content. Yeah, yeah. But I think you need that bridge. You need that one individual who you trust like you trust yourself, like mm -hmm. what Valeria has in me, between that outside world. Yeah. So it's really important that she keeps concentrating on the content. Yeah, yeah. so 12 years later, Marriage, like, yeah. Marriage. No, marriage 10. We six just six years later in partnership. Yeah. I trust you. Thanks. I appreciate you it. You can take it. We got it, it on camera. You guys are recorded. Killer. You guys are killing um, it. The I, I, kids yeah. didn't do it. Yeah, it wasn't. <laughs> enough, but it's okay. The business, I, I, I want to, before, before we ask our famous question, I want to uh, have a little bit of money talk. Mm -hmm. I'm curious, right? Because, like you said, you've amassed, you know, six million followers across all the platforms. You've done brand deals with some of the biggest brands in the world. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know how much you can talk about. I'm going to ask it anyways, and you let me know. Um, you know, I'm curious, like, what what are some of the biggest deals? What do they look like? You don't necessarily have to say the brand if you can't, but uh, numbers wise, I'm always curious. Seven seven figure deals. Seven figure deals. Oh, okay, perfect. and what is That's that? What we need to yeah, perfect. Love that. All right, <laughs> cut, the it. Click cut, bait. cut the camera. We got the clickbait. No, title. no, no. Perfect. Seven figure deals. Okay, <laughs> and in terms of seven figure deals, is that what like what like what amount of content is it is it is that an annual deal? Is is that a month like? Break if you can break it's, it down a little bit for me. It's yeah, it'll be over time. So okay. Certain deliverables. So we have sure. like we have a media kit with a price list, and in yes. the price list, a reel costs this much, a photo costs this yeah, much, yeah. a YouTube integration costs this much, and so brands will come in because brands are understanding. So okay, so I have to provide more context. In the beginning, everybody wanted one-offs. Hey, we'd want to drop this five, ten grand, yeah. twenty grand, thirty grand, whatever it was. But now, both we're explaining to them, and the industry is the industry is evolving and it's maturing. And they understand that just this like one like one hit and run with a lot of influencers it doesn't do it anything. Doesn't, it doesn't build brand affinity yeah. because yes. everyone's trying to get that conversion. Like I want to spend ten grand and I want to make an EBITDA or in margin I want to make like eleven grand so yep. I can make my ten points on my investment. Yeah, that's fine. But in order to actually build brand long term, you need to do 
branding. You need, consistently, to, do, consistently. You need to create affinity yeah. yes. with your brand. You need to yes. story tell. You can't do that in one hits. So just to, to answer your question, yeah, they'll come in and they'll be like, okay, like it's over a year. We want three reels per per month, uh, yes. two photos, integrate here, stories here, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And then but it's a whole storyline. It's a whole like And you're building that out with them. Yeah. Right. Yeah, like side by side. So we're mm-hmm. seeing that now more. So we're actually we're actually by choice working with fewer sponsors in terms of the volume of sponsors. Yeah. yeah. But the average kind of contract size is increasing Longer. dramatically. And they're long term. Because they're they're it's more well, our prices are going up as sure. our audience grows. But it's also increasing because they're doing it for longer terms because they understand now, oh, okay, it is a brand affinity game. It's not just a straight, how many t-shirts am I selling? From one post. Yes. Because the audience can tell too when you just post yeah. about brand once and then never yeah. again. Yeah. They're like, and we're yeah, doing they... far fewer of those one-offs. Yeah. We, still do, we still do them. Sure. But we do them now not so much because we're trying to get that, whatever, $20,000, $30,000 yeah. on our initial deal. It's more like, okay, you know, we we pre we preface it with the client, like we get them ready and say, "That's fine, we'll do this one." We're, once we run it, we're going to look at the data with you, mm-hmm. and yeah. we'd like to understand kind of what your appetite is for a longer, a longer term, term, a longer term commitment. But also how our audience responds to it, right? True. Some brands just don't stick, and then yeah. it's just not beneficial for any of us. Yeah, so. you wouldn't even want to keep it rolling, and neither yeah. would they. Yeah, but I but I would say that we already have the intuition between like yourself yeah. and me and our team. That we already know you know what's going to work. What yeah. works, we know the what brands that work. won't stick. Yeah. 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 yeah, we know the brands that won't stick. Okay, and so f- to follow up that question, I would ask you, and, and I think this is a, is a very unique question because the brand essentially has your name in it. it it's you. Mm-hmm. Do you think you would ever sell? Like, do you think there's an is is there an exit plan? Is that even possible for Valeria Inc? I'm just very curious. It's you or me. I we can both answer. <laughs> well, we, um, we can't talk at the same time. I'll start. Okay. <laughs> I think that my personal opinion, not the media company per okay. se, but I think that something will come, or maybe a few of those things will come sure. where we'll be able to add value, and that's something we'll be able to sell. Okay. But the media company itself, I don't think so. So. I agree with Valeria. The media company itself probably won't sell because okay. you'd have to sell Valeria with it, and she's a human; she <laughs> yep. can't be sold. Fair. And I won't sell her. Um, <laughs> but um, great, I'm happy but, to establish that. Yes, yes. <laughs> but I think w- what the plan is is that as time goes by, what happens is as the uh, you know those two factors that I mentioned, the, the quantitative side and the qualitative side, increase. What happens is revenues increase along with it, but costs don't increase nearly as fast. Yeah. yeah. Right. So costs stay like. You know, yeah, with this industry, that's kind of right. Yeah. The cost once you have your team built out, of course, you know, people make more money every year, but it's not these like massive leaps in costs. So eventually, what happens is it's like a graph, you know, like you have your revenues going up, like at a sharp curve, but your costs kind of increasing at a more at a more linear rate. So you yes. have a linear rate of increase on the cost. You've got an exponential rate of increase on the revenue, revenue and so now you're building cash piles. Mm-hmm. So once you build those cash piles, then you invest in real estate, you invest sure. in mm-hmm. in startups. Uh, yeah. you know, I've had startups myself, so you know, we and we do that now. Like we we you know, we've invested in some like some AI before like there was a hype like a couple of years ago. Sure. Um so you know, we invest in companies in some rare occasions if we really like the company, we'll actually take stock in the company. So cool. if they've done a fund like a like a, a raise, a raise yeah. based on their valuation on that last raise, we'll we'll grab stock and we'll say, okay, that's fine. We'll do it for X amount of equivalent oh, of stock. Oh, cool. Oh, sure. And so okay. we'll do that. So I think to your, you know, with us, it's more like we want to build like an this investment portfolio, cool. and that's where that that's where that um, kind of uh, value will come. That yeah. enterprise value. Will but come. again, that's then you have to give yourself credit. That's from your background of everything else you've done. Cause mm-hmm. I guarantee you probably in the fucking pl- on this planet, there's maybe 10 other creators that have, that are even thinking that that's the future growth. Like we're going to turn this, this the, we're going to turn this influencer into this corporation. This corporation is going to become an investment portfolio. Like yeah. that, that is very rare. When I yeah. hear you say it uh-huh. and I kind of try to look at it as somebody who doesn't kind of know the stuff that I know, yeah, it sounds pretty wild. Yeah, but to me, it's just uh, it's just normal. It's just no, no, like, no. It, you know? and, and I think it's more normal with other types of businesses too. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. but from this type of business, that is for like a personality, pretty much. Yeah. I'm extremely you, rare. Exactly. So, <laughs> okay, oh, brand a visionary. B- b- before before we get to the our 
final and famous question. I have one more question. Now knowing that you think from the media side, you probably won't sell it, something you want to keep and build the portfolio forever. Valeria, do you think you will continue to create content even into your later years? Like, is that right now? Is that how you feel? Yeah. Yeah. I think I couldn't feel anything like that with the product line. That's why for me, it was just so difficult because I wasn't passionate about it. Yeah. But I mean, I always tell Gary that I would have, I would create content now, even if this wasn't a business, because mm -hmm. it's just something that I absolutely love. And I love putting myself out there and I love telling a story. And that's how my creativity comes to life. So yeah. I think that it will evolve and change and may look different, sure. but I think I would still be doing that. So, and, you know, the comment I want to make with that is that in the early stages when she was mostly exclusively doing kind of more, you know, content based on her aesthetic and her fashion, that that's not sustainable for life. So when you yeah. see a lot of these young creators, men, women, whatever, like in, in fashion, unless they do a pivot to do what I, I just kind of myself call more cerebral content, mm -hmm. um, they won't have longevity. And that's why from an early, and I'll, I'll kind of take credit for this because I told Valeria already from close to the beginning, like, that's fine, keep doing this stuff because that's what's getting scale right now. Yeah. But you have to flip into this kind of like, Oprah, I, I use Oprah a lot as an example. Yeah. You have to flip into this Oprah style content, content that's more personal. And you know where I got it from is we did a meetup back in 2019. Um, we were going to do more, but then COVID hit, and we had uh, we had a few hundred people uh, you know come to see Valeria. And when the questions came out, they weren't anything about fashion, or it wasn't just about uh -huh. you know. It was like, hey, what do I do with my career? Lifestyle like, stuff. Like my like, my 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 dad hates me. My like you know what I mean. It, it was yeah. real stuff. It was like family, business, career. So when I saw that, I was like, you have to evolve into this person because when you're going to be 50 or 60 years old, I mean, respectfully, like fashion will still be interesting, yes. but it's not, right. you know what I mean? Yeah, but yeah. that's what's the beauty of it. It's like the audience, you know, they teach me yeah. where I need to go. Right? Yeah, that's so a quote. Like a you grow, the you audience grow. teaches me where I need to go. That's yeah. that, that should be a quote. That's yeah. really important yeah. what she said. Well, well, yeah, you kind of grow with them. You they grow, grow with, with them, you. Yeah. They see your growth and then they kind of let you know, hey, like, we like yeah, this more. Yeah, like mirror. That more. So that that uh, that meetup, it's true. That meetup was very a uh, pivotal moment for us because when we saw the questions and we saw the where the interests are, you know, focused. Because mm. I went out there. I went. I went talking on stage for like forty minutes. And yeah. back then, I was exclusively doing like fashion, beauty, some stuff with the kids. Like there was no really, you know. And yeah. the topic was like not to play small or not right. Yeah. Yeah. And when I we I had that kind of like talk and then when all the girls, the audience started asking questions, I was like my mind was blown. I was so humbled. And like the fact that they are so vulnerable in front of like 300 people and think that I like they want to hear my opinion mm -hmm. on this. Yeah. You know, this is so powerful. Yeah. And when we came back, it was when we were like, OK, this is. The Something. cutest thing, the yeah. cutest thing, here's what, she, here's what happened. We went to London. She was invited to be a, uh, on a podcast from some friends of ours, by some friends of ours. And we, I'm like, oh, let's, we'll make a trip out of it. Let's just go to London for a week, you know, yeah. see the sights, blah, 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 because I'd never been before. And uh, right before we go to London, maybe five days before we go to London, she didn't talk to me about it. She put up a thing saying, hey, guys, I'm going to do a meetup. Um, you know, let me know if you're coming, yeah. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Uh, like 8,000 people are like, yeah, we'll be there. Oh, my God. Well, I was like, oh, we'll go to Starbucks. We'll yeah. get like a little table and yeah, we'll yeah. just hang yeah. out. Oh she wants to go to Starbucks. Oh. She wants to go to a Starbucks to do a meetup. 500 people so show I'm up like, to Starbucks. Whoa. So then we got an event, right? And I said, look, like we can't, we need to get a venue. So we have to put at least some sort of a price tag on it. So yeah. we charge like the equivalent of like, like 20 bucks. Okay. Like, yeah. You know, and we, we gave it all to charity. Like nice. we had a woman come in, we gave her a check on the stage. But I just needed that dollar amount so I could secure a venue because I need to know because there's a big difference between a 300 person venue in terms of cost and a thousand person venue. Yes, hundred percent. Right? Yes. And uh, so that was funny. Like that, I call that uh, HV, you know, humble Valeria. Yeah. Humble, humble Valeria. <laughs> oh, I'm just gonna put it out to like a million people at the yeah, time. Hey, guys. Let's see what happens. Yeah, yeah, Eight thousand. Yeah. No. Um. Well, I mean, okay, we're we we got our famous question, Gary. Yes. I know you've answered this before, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and maybe your answer has changed a bit. So <laughs> we'll ask it again openly. You guys give us both. Ask your, Valeria. Okay. So, Valeria, yes, we're the MBH podcast. Money buys happiness. Mm -hmm. Do you believe money buys happiness? No. 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 Okay. Why not? 
Um, I think money buys you some kind of freedom, and freedom can can be happiness. But I mean, there's just enough case studies out there of very rich and very successful people that are very unhappy. So yeah. I think the work starts within. Yeah, I agree with that. You got to be happy with or without the money. Yeah, that's yeah. just like an added bonus. You know? Yeah. I, don't nice know. I, I think I kind of disagree. <laughs> yes, I agree. I agree that there are like rich, miserable people. That is correct. But I think money in the right hands can buy happiness. I think it depends on the individual. Yeah. Yeah. I think if you're just a rotten, like rotten, uh, miserable person and you throw money at a rotten, miserable. And I've seen this. I've yeah. seen like rotten, miserable people get money. And all it does is money amplifies that. Nasty. Yes. So, yep. yeah. But yes. when someone's a good hearted, hard working, just overall like kind person, mm -hmm. I see the magnification work on that. Yeah. Like, God damn, those people are happy. Yeah. But they're happy without it too. Uh, they're happier with it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, we always say that. Just add money, you the generally. The question wasn't about happier. The question was happy. Does money buy happiness? It's a subjective answer to a subjective question. No, but I agree. I think money just <laughs> amplifies who you are. Yeah. If you're yeah. a good person, a lot of people you're a good person way. with more money. If you're a shitty person, you're just a shitty person with more money. It's right. better to have it than not to have oh, it. Oh, hey, hey, listen, 100%. you're going to ask me 100%. That I agree. I mean, yeah. That's for sure. If that's the question, then yeah, for sure. <laughs> We're definitely capitalists. <laughs> yes. Hey, oh. I, I do not believe that money is the ro root of all evil. No. I, I, I believe that I think Jordan Belfort said it. It's poverty that's the root of all evil. Yeah. Or I would also agree with that. Yeah. Said it. One I agree with that. I agree with that. And you're also rocking. Maybe show it to the camera. My all-time favorite fucking watch. I just gotta say. So this was a you gift. can't buy that without money. Eh? This <laughs> was a gift. Can't put that out there. This That's was not a cheap. gift from my wife. Wow. Good taste. All right, I think you have one on your wrist too. That was yes. a gift. Matching. Oh, there you go. Okay, now <laughs> I understand. Now we my favorite watches. But guys, listen. What a what a pleasure, Dean. How long we go here for? Two hours. Oh wow. That's that's wow. <laughs> I mean, thank Appreciate you so it. much. Yeah, thank you. Your time. Yeah. No, no, it's our pleasure. That I mean, was a uh, lot of fun. I want to. I want to put you guys on the spot. Okay. Here we go. I asked if you wanted to have dinner tonight. Oh. Just with me. She's busy, but why oh. are you uh, doing it on camera? <laughs> I'm do it on camera. Well, I'm putting them on the spot because yeah. maybe yeah. they'll say yes this way. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, I'm yeah, good. Probably, yeah. I'm good. All right. Yeah, let's do it. All right, cool. Let's do it. You're gonna pick the spot though. The deal. All right, guys. Listen, if you made it this far, we fucking love you. Okay, and if you're not subscribed, click the subscribe button, like the video, leave a comment, let us know what you thought. We're easy. Say anything. He's flexing. Talk about the flexing. Whatever you want. All right, <laughs> guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you so it. Much. And uh, Dean, 